former member of the U.S. Supreme Court. He's calling for changes in the Constitution. Correspondent Diane Kepley explains. Former Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens is proposing a total of six amendments to the U.S. Constitution, two of which would alter gun laws in America. One of them would allow Congress to force state participation in gun checks. The other would change the Second Amendment to allow for gun control. The changes are a direct reflection of Stevens' dissent in a gun control case decided by the High Court, the District of Columbia versus Heller, in which the court declared for the first time that Americans have a right to own a gun for self-defense. Stevens' proposals are outlined in his new book, Six Amendments, How and Why We Should Change the Constitution. Diane Kepley, Washington. Federal transportation safety officials are worried about a surge in rail shipments of hazardous liquids. Correspondent David Melendi tells us why. NTSB Chairman Deborah Herzman says a train that once included just one tank car of hazardous liquid is now a disaster waiting to happen. You now have an entire train of 100 cars carrying millions of gallons of this hazardous liquid coming through many communities. She says those shipments have increased 440 percent since 2005. We aren't prepared. Our communities aren't prepared to respond to this. So the NTSB is beginning a two-day forum for experts from the petroleum industry, rail industry, and first responders to put their heads together with safety experts and find ways to avoid catastrophe. David Melendi, Washington. Do you ever wonder where your money goes when it's given to charity? Some fundraisers working for nonprofit charities make half a million dollars or more each year. Correspondent Tim McGuire has a story. A study of the highest salaries paid by nonprofit groups in 2011 finds that nearly 30 fundraisers were paid a half million dollars or more. The highest paid, according to the Chronicle of Philanthropy, and McSweeney, who made $1.2 million as the campaign director at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City. Some of the top paying institutions are either hospitals or universities. Those seeking donations for the arts, environmental groups, or other nonprofits earned less. Tim McGuire, Washington. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Rick Young. looked outside recently, you've noticed that all dogs everywhere are running. Scientists can't explain why all over the world, dogs of every breed are running nonstop. I'm joined now by animal behavior expert, Dr. Charles Davenport. Charles, what can you tell us? All we know for sure is that the dogs are running fast. But we don't know why the dogs are running? There are a few reasons that dogs normally run. Because they're excited or scared, or they see something they want far away, or because they're happy. However, usually, they don't run at the same time or in the same direction. Do we have any idea where the dogs are running? West. All the dogs are running west. Do we expect the dogs to ever stop running? We don't know. Animal behavior can evolve over time. Maybe running forever is just what the dogs do now. Dr. Davenport, is there any chance that the running dogs are somehow related to last night's blue meteor shower or the fact that horses are screaming? Inconclusive. Well, please keep us posted. Up next, where are all the children? This is the Onion News Network. Difficult, but it's still fun to make. This is Free Talk Live, and you're invited to take control of the airwaves. Bring up anything you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Of course, we always bring stuff to the table to talk about tonight. Some photography is not a crime-related news from Carlos Miller over at photographyisnotacrime.com. We'll start out the show with that here tonight. Then, the mayor who ordered a raid on a Twitter, a Twitterer, somebody who's a critic uh, that had a Twitter account that was anti this mayor. We've all kind of had that story in our show prep over the last few nights, and we haven't gotten to that one either. So your calls, of course, come first if you make them. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Uh, with you in the studio this evening, by the way, it's Ian. Johnny Ray. And Mark. And don't forget, of course, you can join us on Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. The story from photographyisnotacrime.com. In the ongoing battle between Daniel Salmon and Southern California police over the right to record in public, which has resulted in him being arrested so many times he's lost count, El Segundo police arrested his friend last week after they were recording the Chevron oil refinery from a public sidewalk, ripping the camera out of his hand and tearing the battery out 
leaving the last video clip he recorded corrupted and unable to be viewed. Hmm. Tony Rachal, the man referred to as poetic in the videos, spent two hours in jail before he was released with a citation of impeding traffic. A traffic violation normally reserved for cars driving too slow in a single lane where cars behind are unable to pass, not bicycles using a single lane of a double lane street, which is what took place, as you can see in the video, which we'll link to you over on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. If anybody was impeding traffic, it was the cops who blocked an entire lane with their cars, as they so often do. I can't tell you how many times I've seen police pull somebody over in a, an entire lane of traffic when there's like a parking lot right there. They yeah. could easily pull down a side street. And, and oftentimes, I mean, in the one circumstance I've had where I try to go on, and I've heard other people say this, you know, to a, to a, to a spot that's I consider to be safe, they have a fit. Mm-hmm. You know, like, pull oh, yeah. over, pull over, right here, right in the middle of God and everything. You were acting in a fashion that was disruptive and dangerous to traffic, so we'll park right here where we are disruptive and dangerous to traffic, because yep. I have to stop disruption and danger to traffic. I mean, it's insane. It's okay, Mark. He's a professional. He, cops get cops get splattered all over the road mm-hmm. every year. So, if any, uh, again, the cops were the ones that were impeding traffic, according to Carlos. But the cops obviously needed an excuse to charge the men, considering there's no law against recording the refinery from a public street. In fact, there are numerous photos of the monstrosity on the Internet, not to mention that Chevron claims on its own website that it maintains a, quote, open-door policy with refinery neighbors, unquote. But it appears someone from the refinery called the police on the three men on bicycles standing outside the plant with cameras on April 15th, which is not the first time this has happened. Yeah, this story sounded very familiar to me. Not the same, it's not the original story that we've read, but there has been another story, at least one that we've read on these airwaves about somebody just wanted to take a picture of an oil refinery. They're standing on a public street, aiming their camera at everything that anyone who's driving by would be able to see. And they get harassed by uh, the police over it. We've seen this with uh, trains, too. You know, people love, right. l- people love trains. There's like a train fanatics group. Yeah, men specifically love trains. <laughs> and, uh, you know, people t- want to take pictures of them. And we've seen people arrested for that, too. All kinds of different things that, you know, are visually interesting. And you should be able to take a picture of them in a free country. You would think. Now, maybe there is somebody out there who's listening to this discussion thinking that we are on the wrong uh, side of this issue, that maybe these are national security targets, these are likely to be locations that uh, terrorists are going to be interested in causing trouble with, and so therefore shouldn't people, in this case the police or security at the, at, uh, the, the location, shouldn't they be concerned with somebody who's taking a picture? Couldn't that lead to trouble? Um, no. Here's the reason. Um, if terrorists decide that they're going to target whatever this thing is, they're going to, and they want to take pictures for whatever reason, then, for one, you can probably get the pictures you want off the internet already. Yep. They're already up there. Apparently. But whatever. If you want to get these pictures, they've got all kinds of uh, spy cameras. You can get cameras that are set up in people's gla- in your glasses, in your sunglasses, in your uh, you know key fob for your car. Um, you can get uh, ones that look like sticks of gum. You pens. can, but a lot of those things suck. Um, but there are some good ones, right? Yes. Yes. There's a pair of glasses that's excellent. I'm looking forward to trying this pair of glasses. I haven't tried them what's it myself call, yet. Uh, what's it called? The pivot Head Glasses. The Pivot Head Glasses. Block, uh, is giving away right now with their new video contest at copblock.org slash pivot head. Right. One, um, one would assume that uh, you know terrorists would not buy the $5 one that you get <laughs> from China, um, that they yeah. would invest the money that it took to get a good camera. And, uh, you know, even so, they could just take their iPhone and walk along and, uh, you know, take some video or whatever, uh, you know, surreptitiously. I mean, all you're doing is you're going after people who are aiming up to get a good shot. Pretty much. The police need something to break up the boredom of their wasted lives. Oh, and so they, they, Don't it's, you a think lot, they'd it's, want- a, it's a lot easier to catch a couple of guys who are actually there, a couple of Americans right, taking who are pictures. hanging out there long enough to the, for the police to arrive. Right, right? Like minutes you, and minutes. Than to catch the terrorists who don't really exist. 
Well, don't you think that the police would really rather be dealing with some other crime? I mean, don't you think it got into their work to catch bad guys instead of to harass people? I have no idea why they got into to their work. The evidence is that they do a lot of harassment. These things, by the way, these pivot head sunglasses are pretty sweet. I mean, these are uh, $200 sun- pair of sunglasses, so it's not just a cheapy key fob. I've had those key fobs, man, and they just they go bad, fast. Yep, fast. So uh, toll-free number here tonight, 855-450 free. You can comment further on this story. Uh, a little bit more here from uh, Photography is Not a Crime. The police arrived on the scene, and, of course, they did their usual shakedown. Uh, by the way, Mr. Salmon, who runs the site Mistaken Bacon, obtained the dispatch conversations of police responding to the scene through a site called Broadcastify, which he pays $15 for every six months, including the audio in the uh, the video that they link to here. Police arrived and did their shakedown of the de- of demanding identifications and asking to search their backpacks and insisting on knowing why would they want to record the refinery. But the men knew their rights and did not consent to searches or volunteer any more information than, than they were legally required. So the cops drove off, telling the men they were free to be on their way. However, the cops continued monitoring the men from a distance, watching as they started riding their bicycles down the street before pulling them over again for impeding traffic. According to this bicycle advocacy site, bikinginla.com, a minimum of five cars must be driving behind the slow-moving vehicle, unable to pass for this citation to be valid. However, unless they can get the citation dismissed, they will be required to pay a $236 fine. That sounds to me like if, if that bicycle website is right on in its description of what this charge is all about, you know, the delaying traffic or whatever... Uh, then they're going to have an open and shut case. They just have to be willing to take it to court. They have to be willing to, you know, not take a plea deal. And I would hope that individuals who know their rights enough to refuse consent to a search would also know that they should take these ridiculous charges to court and uh, make sure they don't end up paying the state to harass them further. The men didn't hesitate to identify themselves verbally, by the way, as they were harassing the men for impeding traffic. Cops demanded identifications, but they didn't have them on them, as there's no law in California requiring one to possess a driver's license to operate a bicycle. They didn't hesitate to identify themselves verbally, which is why Salman and his friend were cited but not arrested. Rashal also identified himself, but at one point the cop tried to grab his camera and Rashal pulled it away. The cop then ordered him to sit on the curb, which he did while still recording. Eventually, they ordered him to place his hands behind his back, which was when they snatched his camera and removed the battery. He was released two hours... Shows what this was really all about. Yep. He was released two hours later with his camera, but when he tried to search it for the file he'd recorded, he was unable to access it. So he's looking for help on how to repair this file, if it's possible. It, we know how to undelete a file if the cops delete something, but how do you repair one that's corrupted because the cop popped the battery off of it in the middle of it recording? That's what they need help on. We'll put the link up on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. If you know how to help, uh, please reach out via this link. Come back with more Free Talk Live. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said... Uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because... I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938, 877-357-9938. 
Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. If you are like most people, chances are you're malnourished. Most people do not get the 90 essential nutrients the body needs to survive. This lack of nutrition can lead to all sorts of health issues. If you don't feel as good as you'd like, or if you're looking to get a jump start on a new, healthier you, Longevity has your answer. With the Healthy Start Pack, you get all the nutrients your body needs. With all 90 essential nutrients and 115 fruits and vegetables, you get a supplement system that is antioxidant rich and beyond compare. The Healthy Start Pack includes products backed by 40 years of science and millions of dollars in research, like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, EFA Plus 90, and OsteoFX Plus. To order your Healthy Start Pack today, call 607-739-5595. Again, that number is 607-739-5595. Once you start taking the Healthy Start Pack, you will see and feel why our motto is 90 for life. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, bring up whatever you want here. The toll-free number is 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online, of course, at freetalklive.com. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Readers of freedomsphoenix.com are constantly provided the detailed real news that lies behind the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. FreedomsPhoenix.com. They offer up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Go to FreedomsPhoenix.com. Get signed up for their free daily dispatch. That's FreedomsPhoenix.com. We go to Chris in Indiana. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Johnny Ray, and Mark. Hey, Chris. Hey, gentlemen. Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Well, a couple things. First off, I wanted to comment on that. The police being worried about people taking pictures. What about the pictures that they take and sell to BustedMugshots.com to get money and cause a national extortion campaign on people? What is this website? I mean, isn't that pretty cool? Oh, you didn't know about BustedMugshots.com? No, what is it? Well, police departments illegally sell mugshot pictures of people they've arrested to this website, and they uh, it's extortion operation going on. Because you pay them like 90 bucks or whatever, and they get your picture off of it as long as you're not a sex offender. Oh, okay. So what you're saying is 
that this website will uh, th- they'll buy mugshots in mass from the police, and mugshots are anybody who's been arrested, which means that uh, even if you end up getting the charges thrown out or you end up beating the charges in court, that mugshot's still on file. You're still on file as having been arrested. So what you're saying is that their pictures are showing up on this website, and a lot of people are concerned with someone finding a mugshot of theirs and the the fact that they were arrested for anything online, maybe in a job, you know, like they're applying for a job, somebody's uh, looking around on them. Is a mugshot not public uh, property? Oh, it's public information, but usually you have to go through some level of effort uh, to acquire it, right? Yeah, but, I mean, it's it's causing people to kill themselves. I mean, but if, if you've been... If you've gotten off, they take it off for free, but that doesn't make it any better. I mean, most people don't get off, so... Yeah, that's a good point. And you still have to, you know, know about this site. You still have to contact them. You still have to ask them for the takedown. You'd have to provide them with the information that proved that you had gotten off the charge. So, you know, how likely it is that people are even going to know about it. Yeah, I'm just saying it's pretty hypocritical by the police department that they're so worried about other people taking pictures and then they're actually using pictures and selling them to websites and ruining people's lives and all that. Just yeah. another wonderful thing. That That's a good people, point. Uh, the real, yeah, I just wanted to comment on that story, but then the real reason I called in is because uh, I know Campaign for Liberty is not perfect, but it's a lot better than what we got going on right now. And Ron Paul, he sent an email to everybody, all of his donors and so forth, with the subject, the toughest letter I've ever sent. And I think this should be getting more public uh, coverage, because I only see a few stories come up, and the IRS is committing more extortion on his campaign, saying that if you don't give us all of your donor information, we're going to put a huge tax fine on you, even though that the Campaign for Liberty is 501c4, which is automatically makes it illegal for them to um, get the information about its donors. So, I mean, it's just showing that they can do whatever, or they're trying to just do whatever they want. And if anybody, everybody goes on to campaignforliberty.org, they can sign a petition to, because it gives you two options. Should he stand up to the IRS, or should he put his head down and hope it doesn't happen again? And if everyone just, you know, goes and puts in real quick to stand up to the IRS, I mean, he's, just, he's trying to get rid of the IRS. I mean, this is what they do. They They just tax any... Thing that's against them out of existence. I mean, that's what it was, one of the functions of it. You know, I think it's ridiculous. So IRS is demanding that Ron Paul's campaign turn over their contribution list, and he's refusing to do that. Yeah, check this out. I, I, I have it directly from Ron Paul. This is what he said. It just takes 30 seconds to write real quick. Okay. This is one of the toughest letters I've ever had to send. For years, people have joked that the three most feared letters in the English language may well be these, IRS. But today, I'm not laughing. Just Days ago, the IRS handed Campaign for Liberty a hefty fine and demanded we turn over sensitive contributor information. If we don't comply with the IRS's outrageous demand for sensitive donor information, I'm afraid we'll face additional fines that could cripple Campaign for Liberty and perhaps even force us to shut our doors. And it's just disgusting. If everyone just go to campaignforliberty.org, they'll see it right on the front page, big banner about it. And I just only saw a few little stories about it, and it's just... So criminal that these gang of extortionists could do this to such a great man. It's just disgusting. Well, that's what happens when you have an impact as an activist, and being a politician like Ron Paul is activism. You know, if you have an impact, the people who support the status quo are going to come, they're going to organize against you. They're going to make life as miserable as possible for you, and I hope that they don't pay up uh, these fines to the IRS because, I mean, that would be just as bad as handing over the donor, the donor information, just they're empowering them one way or empowering them the other. I mean, I don't see, you know, would it really be so difficult for them to dissolve Campaign for Liberty and, you know, create a new corporation? I mean, isn't that all Campaign for Liberty is, essentially, is, oh, well, somebody went and registered Campaign for Liberty LLC or PAC or I don't know how you go about doing that, but usually, you know, you can just sunset one of these things and start another one. Campaign for Liberty Part Do or something like that. I don't know if it's that easy. Yeah, but I mean, it's just, yeah, go ahead. I would not think it would be that easy. Yeah, it's probably not that easy, but I still don't, I still don't want them to either give up the list or give up the cash.
either way is to me unacceptable but then again i'm not a donator so i i don't feel right to go over and and uh, express well, they my started opinion. campaign for liberty with our um donations from even from 2008 that's true i did give ron paul's campaign money so i guess you might be right that i have uh, some sort of skin in this game thank you chris for the heads up on that i appreciate hearing from you 855 450 free that's the uh, toll-free number i mean yeah, I wanted to go back to something that Chris had said earlier when he was talking about, I think it was called bustedmugshots.com. That sounds right, yeah. When you your society has the police creating, arresting people and creating this juicy information about them, there's going to be a market for that info. Mm -hmm. And if there's no incentive baked into that police system like the private market would have to keep the, the data private – you know, the police aren't hurt at all if that information gets out, really, that I can think of. So if that market is created, it's going to get the data, the info is, is going to get sold. Maybe it'll be out in the open with the police, you know, explaining why it's okay, and maybe it'll be underground and you won't know about it, but they're not going to protect the info. It's 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 too valuable. It's going to get out. The only the only solution is to, to not have the info created in the first place. So you got to get rid of the police. Well, that's not going to happen. And even in a free market environment, there's still an argument to be made, Johnny Ray, that you know if we if you get rid of the government police, some people are going to want to replace them with some sort of protection services, presumably. And there may be a call for those services to open the books, so to speak, and you know show the world who they're arresting for transparency's sake. I don't think it's a terrible thing that the police put arrest records online. I, 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 I'm not really concerned about that. Uh, but then again, I'm not applying for some big corporate job and trying to clean up my online profile. I had a guy uh, send me a message on Facebook recently asking if I could remove something from Free Keen because he's trying to get a job and, you know, he regrets what he said, I guess. More coming up. This is Free Talk Live, and I did it for him. Free Talk Live. My name is Jessica Armand. I'm an activist, a GCN listener, and mother of three. Our drinking water and food are filled with fluoride and other contaminants that harm our teeth and gums. To protect my family, I created My Magic Mud, an all-natural teeth whitening and strengthening remedy. My Magic Mud is a soft powder that polishes your teeth, reduces sensitivity, and removes harmful toxins from deep inside your mouth. You deserve a bright, healthy smile. Visit MyMagicMud.com and get yours today. That's MyMagicMud.com. The TalkStream Live app for iPhone, iPad, and Android is the fastest and easiest way to access live talk radio anytime, anywhere. Download the free TalkStream Live app right now and see for yourself. You'll enjoy instant access to the best in live talk radio. Find your favorite shows and discover some new ones. The TalkStream Live app is available in the App Store, the Google Play Store, or visit TalkStreamLive.com. That's TalkStreamLive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Pure Life Water, helping you drink better and live better by providing a zero-calorie alternative to sugary drinks. Visit us at nestle-purelife.us. When kids are playing, they often don't want to stop to keep hydrated, so send them out with a bottle of water and encourage them to take frequent drink breaks or call them inside for a quick sip. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done. Get a great deal. And a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas. Liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about whatever you want here, toll free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Skype into the show at username lrn.fm, and you do need to send a contact request on Skype first. That's not a problem. You send that request, it'll be approved probably by the next segment of the show, and then you can easily call in uh, to get on the air via Skype, and you'll sound usually a lot better than if you're on the phones. So don't forget, join us over at freetalklive.com. But before you do that, go to proxpn.com slash FTL and get some protection because the Internet can be kind of a dangerous place. And it's usually a good idea to have protection. Most people don't when you're uh, jumping around from website to website, entering whatever search terms you're entering. All that information is likely being logged by your Internet service provider. And that log is being kept for up to five years in some cases. I always use protection. You should. It's a sensible thing to do, especially when you can get it for 5 bucks a month. You want to talk about a uh, an unbeatable deal. Uh, ProXPN.com slash FTL. It's an amazing price for what they're providing in protection services. So what they're doing primarily is they're operating as a global virtual private network. It encrypts your data that you are that is leaving and entering your computer, meaning your Internet service provider is at that point relegated to simply kind of being a pass-along agent. They're no longer able to look at all the information that you're sending to them. Right, they don't see it. It's all encrypted. All they see is this encrypted data stream, and it's going on to their servers, and it's moving on to the ProXPN servers from there. And then once it gets to ProXPN, then it's decrypted and sent out to the rest of the Internet. So you protect yourself from your ISP snooping on you, or even somebody, if you're on a laptop, for instance, somebody could be sniffing out your Wi-Fi packets. If those are encrypted... It's going to be next to impossible for them to get your bank account or credit card information or something like that. Imagine sitting at a coffee shop or whatever, somebody just kind of inspecting your packets. They can do that if you don't have ProXPN. So go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. Start with their software. You can start for free. Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android. There's also instructions available. You have to email their tech support to get it for Linux users. But whatever your operating system, you can get ProXPN working, and it works well. In fact, you can also privately torrent with their premium account. Also with the premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth. And you can also get around regionally blocked websites. Uh, so, for instance, if you're in China, you're on a laptop there, your laptop, you've got ProXPN on it, you're not restricted at all in what you can search for and the websites that you can visit. Well, Brian said he was in Canada, and because he his music was on, I don't know, some Google service, it wasn't available across the border. Oh, wow. So he went on ProXPN, went through the VPN, Took care of it. It works. Uh, ProXPN.com slash FTL. Code is FTL20. Gets you 20% off for the lifetime of your account. And uh, if you buy the annual plan with that code, FTL20, it breaks the price down to 5 bucks a month. It's, un- it's unbel- uh, unbelievable. And it gets even better if you pay with Bitcoin for the annual plan. Then you save even more. So go to ProXPN.com slash FTLs. We go to Jay Noon. He's on the line. Uh, free- uh, Jay, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello there. Hey, guys. 
Hey, welcome. Hey, uh, I just wanted to bring up um, the, the other guy I called in about Campaign for Liberty getting um, essentially harassed by the IRS. And I'm sure when Campaign for Liberty asked the IRS for permission and bowed down to them via a nonprofit corporation, that there's millions and millions and millions of pages of of text, IRS code that they agreed to. And we all know there isn't a single man or woman alive that can understand the IRS because you, you couldn't physically read it in a lifetime that all these things you agree to when you sign up to do a deal with the devil that calls itself the IRS. And you're talking about the 501c3 status, C4. or in their case, it'll be a 501c4. I don't know what the hell the difference is, but... You know, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't care what it is, as long as you're asking the IRS for some kind of privilege. Right. Then, I, then what's happening is it's just like getting a gun license. Once you get a gun license, you have surrendered your right to bear arms and converted it into a privilege. Mm-hmm. Well, so, I, 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 I don't know about that uh, particularly because, I mean, in some states will, um, you know, have issues with this or that or the other. But well, one no, thing's he's, for sure. No, he's right. Anytime you beg for permission, you're changing a right into But the into government a doesn't respect your right. No, they don't. They don't. They could give a, a flip about your right. But what Jay is correct about, no doubt, there is no disputing that what Jay is correct about here is, is that when you sign up with the IRS, there's all kinds of rules you're 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 opting into. Like for instance, if when you sign your tax return, I think it says that uh, you know if anything fraudulent's in the tax return, it's up to a ten year sentence. Well. Not filing a tax or failure to file a tax returns a one year sentence. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, you know, you're you're signing a piece of paper that says that you're eligible for up to ten years. Um, when you know, not not filling it out at all would have been one. Yeah, and the other thing that uh, is interesting about this, and most people don't realize it, but Jay, I'm sure you're aware of this. A lot of people they get the 501c three four whatever because they believe that that's the only way they can offer people to give tax deductible contributions to their well, Ron their Paul's agency. not a church this is a pack mm -hmm. right I don't know what all but, that means but like so my point is here is that uh, at the the, well, was it, the last the last day of Liberty Forum everybody was in the big room there and Carla was up there talking about well, said something about being a recovering lawyer, and it's, they need to get more money, and she's tr been trying to do get nonprofit status from the IRS for the Free State Project. Mm -hmm. And I was I was a lonesome boo in the room, <laughs> and, I, and I don't think good for you. I don't think people I don't think people realize you know um, uh, that's opening up Pandora's box, and you know. Now, now you'll have the IRS as what it does to all churches. And I used to Bible study with a bunch of Jehovah Witnesses. And Jehovah Witnesses are uh, whatever, they're a 501c3 nonprofit. And for some reason, in a particular place I used to go, from the higher levels of the Jehovah Witness Church, they were really being leaned on to preach why you should pay your property tax, hmm. why you should pay your income tax. So my friends, who's still a good friend of mine, he, but he won't talk to me about this. I asked him about this and say, I go, were you guys threatened to lose your 501c3 nonprofit status? And he goes, I'm going to find out. And, uh, well, he needless to say, that's a speechless topic now with this guy. Hmm. And I can only speculate, but... Well, we know there's plenty you know, of examples of uh, pastors who have been restricted by the IRS from taking political positions on things like issues and candidates, and sure. they were threatened with having 501c3 revoked. But you, every year, every election year, you see presidential candidates in churches addressing uh, churches. Mm -hmm. It makes no sense to me at all. But, but so, so what you're doing is by getting a 501c3 status... It, or any kind of nonprofit status with the IRS is here. You're literally kneeling down and saying, "Oh, please allow me to have uh, the power to give somebody a a, a a receipt so they can write it off their tax." And um, uh, if the Free State Project does become an actual 501c3 or whatever IRS recognized nonprofit, I, I'm I'm withdrawing. I'm not going to be having anything to do with an organization that is under the 
thumb of the IRS. Now, does that mean, Jay, that you will not move to New Hampshire? Because there are some people who no. are moving to New Hampshire, and they don't, they're not joining the Free State Project. Right. Right. It, no, I, I'm definitely – my plan is to go to New Hampshire because – All right, great. Because, you know, I – I want to be in courtrooms with all you guys, and you know I want to. I, I'm the guy who wants to drive a car around Keene with no license plates on it, and That's whoever awesome. wants to volunteer to ride with me and videotape. This is the kind of stuff I want to do. This is what I feel needs to happen. This is the place you can absolutely do that. There's uh, there's no doubt about it, and it's only going to get better as time goes on. I share your concerns, Jay Noon. Uh, this is one of the reasons why we started the Shire Free Church is because a lot of churches out there are these sort of state churches. I mean, for lack of a better term, there are churches that beg the state for permission to exist there are churches that beg the state for some kind of exemption, some sort of privilege. And as you're pointing out, as soon as you sign that form, begging, you're entreating them, you're, you know, you're applying for this permission slip. Uh, they're going to go ahead and you know, regulate you in whatever way they see is fit. And by the way, they lie to people. When they say, when attorneys say that you need to get 501c3 for tax deductible status from the research for I've church. done for a church, at least, I don't know about the other organizations, but at least for a church, that's not true. It is a lie, and that is information that attorneys give to people who are seeking, how do I become tax exempt? Well, you should sign up for this. Here, give me $5,000, and I'll hold your hand through the process. Thanks for your call, Jay. There's more coming up on Free Talk Live. Everybody wants to know. What can you buy with bitcoins? Isn't there like a Bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is, and it's at BitcoinGeneralStore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything with free shipping. What can you find at BitcoinGeneralStore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. you got to see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. Imagine an acne treatment breakthrough that even Proactive says is better than Proactive. Announcing all new Proactive Plus, the revolutionary new way to clear your skin from the number one name in acne care. Proactive Plus is our best, most effective solution ever. And when you call 1-800-721-4255 today, you can have it tomorrow. Proactive Plus is the modern acne miracle that treats your skin beautifully. The plus means more. More precise, targeted medicine for faster, gentler acne prevention. And more skin-loving solutions so your complexion can look bright and beautiful. I am just so happy with Proactive Plus. I don't think my skin has ever looked this good. Call 1-800-721-4255. Be one of the first to try Proactive Plus. Guaranteed 100% risk-free. You won't see this limited-time offer on TV. It's a radio exclusive. 1-800-721-4255. 1-800-721-4255. slash pivothead. To ensure that a record of the truth of police interactions exists and is accessible, we each need to fill. That's why we're happy to announce the Accountability Through Transparency video contest the winner of which will receive a pair of pivot head sunglasses. For more information and to submit your video entry, go to cutblock.org slash pivot head. One, document with a camera a police employee exhibiting double standards or the standards we expect them to live up to. This can be done while on foot, during a vehicle stop, while submitting an open records request, etc. Two, upload your video to your YouTube channel. Three, fill out the form at cutblock.org slash pivot head by the deadline of midnight Eastern Standard Time, May 23rd, 2014. Four, the winner chosen by contest sponsors will be notified by email and the Pivot Head sunglasses will be shipped once the mailing address is received. Coplock.org slash Pivot Head. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. 
Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at Facebook.LRN.FM. That's Facebook.LRN.FM. Oops. Free Talk Live. You can dial in here toll free at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. And you can join us online at freetalklive.com where you can enjoy all the features there. Completely free. Those other talk show hosts, they charge you for their websites. Ours, it's free. You can download archives and watch the webcam and interact in a variety of different ways. All free over at freetalklive.com. Something else you can do that's free to you but is actually going to benefit kids with cancer is joining the Free State Project. And, uh, Mark, you put together a, a little fundraiser. Yeah, that's right. Um, at this point, we've Maybe got... it's not going to be so little when it's all said and done. I'm not sure what we're going to have to shell out for this. We, uh, Yeah, I don't know. But we're giving away, at this point, $30 to St. Jude Hospital and $10 to the Heifer International. When you say we, it's uh, you, me, and two other gentlemen who have put up the uh, the $40 per signer in right. total. If you want to email me at marketfreetalklive.com and you want to uh, pledge with us, what the pledge essentially is is that I picked a day, a moment in time, um, and another moment said, anybody who signs up between these moments, I will give $10 to St. Jude for. Some other people thought it was a good idea, they, mm-hmm. including you, Ian, and right. a couple of other listeners, and so they pledged to do the same or similar. And... It was the number was we were at fifteen thousand five hundred and eighty eight signers, and uh, I'm not sure what the current number is, but I'll tell you it here in just one second. It's a little over sixteen thousand six. Excuse me, fifteen thousand six hundred and fifteen. Okay. So you know I'm I'm not going broke yet. We got another full week though on this. That's right. It's till April the thirtieth, the last moment of April the thirtieth. Um, and so if you've been thinking about signing up for the Free State Project and you just haven't gotten around to it yet, this is the best time to do it because you're going to help uh, kids with cancer. And heifers, Are those cows. Is that well, another name just, for cow? A, a heifer is a young female cow. Um, it is Heifer International is an organization that uh, gives animals to uh, people in uh, poor countries. Oh, that's so nice. You know, whatever it might be that's uh, best for them: pigs, cows, uh, cool. rabbits, whatever. And you can pick there over at Heifer International. So anyway, it's a great organization, and I I like it too. We've we've uh, used that one. The, today I wanted to do St. Jude. But what this is also great for is if you have a loved one that you wanted to get signed up for the Free State Project, haven't had that opportunity to make that to get that conversation going, hey, if they can sign up by April 30th, not only do they get potentially liberty in their lifetime, but they also get to help right. give $40 to people in need. Do you love kids with cancer? And if so, you should sign up for the Free State Project at freestateproject.org. But you also have to love freedom and be willing to move to New Hampshire in order to achieve more of it in our lifetime. That is why we're here. We, as in the three of us in the studio, all Free State Project participants. And uh, Johnny Ray, are you going to Porkfest this year? Oh, yeah, of course. Ah, uh, yes, as are we. Uh, very much looking forward to this, uh, the Porcupine Freedom Festival. You can go and get your tickets to that now for 60 bucks. Uh, over at porkfest.com, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. So it's essentially it's camping party event in the woods uh, with around fifteen hundred uh, like minded, liberty oriented people. Lots of great spe- uh, speeches and do it yourself presentations. There's it's kind of DIY is going to be uh, the theme this year. Porkfest.com. Go get registered June twenty second through the 29th. Free Talk Live will be broadcasting live every single night from the event. And I'm looking forward to it. It's always a fun, great time, and always all kinds of interesting people. Lots of newbies every single year. People oh, yeah. have never been to New Hampshire before. It's a perfect opportunity to come and check it out, uh, what it's like to be around people who actually get freedom. Go to Porkfest, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. Grab your tickets now. And uh, Jay Newton called in um, about... 
the Free State, State Project, Project and having, 501c3. Yeah, uh, you know, trying to get 501c3 status. And this is something they've been trying to do for a long time. They were kind of caught up in that uh, IRS thing where they were targeting, uh, you know, conservative groups or whatever, whatever that Free State might Project's be. not a conservative group. Are so, you saying they were targeted in that? That was my understanding that, huh. I, you know, so I heard from the grapevine. It's not like I'm, you know, got my I'm not sitting in okay. their board meetings or anything. But one thing that's unique about the Free State Project is even if they do get 501c3 status, remember, we have fewer than 5,000 signers to go. We're more than 75% yeah. of the way there. So, so why bother at this point? One might ask that question um, because maybe there's some major donors out there that want to give, you know, like, yeah. here's my question to you, Ian. If somebody said, hey, if you make uh, Free Talk Live a uh, 501c3 and I'll give you $2 million, you might start working on that. Nope, would not. Okay. Not interested You're, in consenting you, to the government. Uh, fine, that's fine. But I said you might and not some me. people would. Some people would. $2 million. And that's just it. I mean, they're being tempted by the thirty, the you know proverbial 30 pieces of what silver. What is the 30 pieces of silver in the case of the Free State Project, though? The idea that there would be donors who would not otherwise donate if somebody doesn't F- fine. jump through but the hoops. what's the danger? Who's getting executed, Ian? Uh, the danger is they become then more controlling over your organization and things you can say and How the things long? you can do. The Free State Project only has a little bit longer to go till they get uh-huh. the sign up. It's not like the government can or would do. I mean, it would take, it would take years in court just to settle some kind of dispute Mm -hmm. and most organizations that get the status it's not like you know it's not like they really comply they they comply because of fear not because they're actually being told anything Mm. so my my thought process is the free state project is simply a project to get twenty thousand liberty loving individuals to sign up and then within a five-year window move for the free state project it's a decent argument that you know if they're going to shut down eventually then it really won't matter doesn't really matter Let's go to the phones here. AC's in Ohio. You're on Free Talk Live. AC. Hey. Um, yeah, I wanted to uh, tell a story of a of something that happened this weekend between my dad and uh, my brother. Okay. It's about a about his uh, experience in government school. He's a senior. He's going to be graduating this year. He's currently going to a vocational school, the same one I went to a few years ago, where I took uh, computer classes and. Um, it turns out he uh, is failing a class, and the class mm. he's failing is some sort of – it's one of these elective courses. Like, it's a course you don't have to pass to graduate, and it's, and it's something they just put him in when he started the semester. It's not like he chose this class. It's some sort of accounting class. And so my brother said – so my brother, from what I've heard, overheard from the conversation, because I'm trying not to get too deep in, his, uh, get too deep in their conversation, um, is I mean, basically he said something about, like, how – he doesn't care about this class because he doesn't think oh, I didn't I didn't sign up for this class. I didn't I don't need to learn the stuff in here. It's not important to what I'm taking. And so he's been using it to uh he's been using his class time to finish work from other classes, like classes he has to pass or classes that that are, he considers important. Mm-hmm. And my dad, you know, he's getting really got really mad and said, you know, you need to turn these assignments and you can't go in. My parents are like, you can't go. You know, if they give you that class, you have to pass it. That's your job. You can just go around in life picking and choosing what you want to do in your job. And, of course, this isn't a job, honestly. But but it was an interesting uh, piece of uh, – I was as I was sitting there listening to this, I'm just thinking to myself, uh, yeah, there's nothing about this class that he's taking that seems to go into the valley. He's like taking carpentry or something. Well, I can see, um, you know, I can see of, uh, you know, one standpoint here is that they're teaching something in this class that is of value, right? Like whatever that might be, and even if you know, I as a talk show host. Um, you know, might end up in some class that ex- expressive dance class. Um, I it wouldn't be of any value to me for any other reason than sort of exercise. But you know, I might learn something different. If you happen to be in a class, then you know, there's an opportunity. It doesn't sound like your brother views it as an opportunity, and I, I think that this is you know what I would what I see here is is that um, you know it's just sort of one thought process versus another thought process and. I, I have to side with I have to end up siding with your brother because it's his life, you know? Yeah, well and the funny thing is you absolutely do get to go around in life and pick your job. I mean ultimately you're the one who chooses where you work. Yeah, but what you what the, the father's the point the father's making is is that if you do take a job, you have to do all the parts of the job. Mm, like there are parts of our job that are more um, pleasant and less pleasant. Right. And we have to do them all, otherwise free talk live doesn't work. I concur with the father on that. However, 
you know, this is school, and school is it occupies this unique area where you give them money, and then they tell you what to do. <laughs> Nowhere else in the world does this happen. Right, you don't get to have it your way, like at <laughs> right. Burger King. They, you yeah, know, usually yeah, you go one. somewhere, and they give you money, and then tell you what to do, or you give them money and tell them what to do. But very few places do they yeah. do you give them money and they tell you what to do. Pretty much government in school. The your quality of life as you grow up is going to be much greater if you take the if you take um, the 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 tack that you make your own decisions and and you guide your own life. It, it sounds like your brother is probably using his time wisely. He's working on work from his other classes, work that he's interested in. And um, I think it's a dangerous message that your parents are giving your brother. My parents gave me the same one. Oh, yeah. Parents are full of dangerous messages that are very pro-school and very anti-freedom. I mean, that's just like people are well, programmed to parrot this stuff. I don't have um, that predisposition that you guys are saying. What I, I, mean, I have a sympathy for the dad's position in this, but ultimately it's your brother's life and he gets to make that decision for himself i hope he's making it for the right reasons um you know if he's taking a nap during class that doesn't really count in my book ac thanks for your call tonight 855 450 freeze the toll free number it's brought to you by pro xpn plenty of time for you with your call and thoughts just dial in toll free at 855-453 that's 855-450-3733 or skype into the show username there is lrn.fm come back with hour number two next on free talk live Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade-grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Are you tired of governments around the world killing innocent people? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin is money that cannot be inflated or controlled by any state. By continuing to use their money, you're perpetuating the killing. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available to you now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at weusecoins.com. It's weusecoins.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, April 22nd, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.49 per ounce. Gold is worth $1,291 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $494. Antiwar.com reports a barrage of U.S. drone strikes across Yemen's south and east has entered its third day and shows no signs of slowing down as the latest U.S. attacks targeted the Shabwa province. With so many of the attacks occurring against remote villages in the hills of Yemen's rural interior, the death toll is difficult to ascertain, but at least 65 are believed dead over the past three days. 
Yemeni officials say the strikes are targeting top leaders of al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, and they have high hopes that the strikes may kill one of the leaders, but they can't confirm anything of the sort so far. Indeed, while all of the official statements from Yemen have termed the slain militants, or at the very least, suspects, not a single person has been identified at all so far officially, and many civilians were confirmed among the slain on Saturday. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. The Washington Post reports a sharply divided Oklahoma Supreme Court on Monday put on hold the execution of two death row inmates who have challenged the secrecy surrounding the source of the state's lethal injection drugs. In a 5-4 to four decision, the court issued the stays one day before the death row inmate Clayton Lockett was scheduled to be executed for the 1999 shooting death of a 19-year-old Stephanie Nyman. The second inmate, Charles Warner, was convicted in the 1997 death of his roommate's 11-month-old daughter and was scheduled to be executed on April 29th. The ruling halts the executions until the state Supreme Court can hold a hearing on the inmates' lawsuit. Attorney General Scott Pruitt's office did not say whether it would appeal. An email statement by the Attorney General's office said, The AG's office is trying to determine the appropriate response to address these issues. A spokesman for the Department of Corrections, Jerry Macy, said the agency had not seen the order and was still preparing as if Lockett's execution would be held today. The Supreme Court said it wanted to fast-track the case, but a hearing has not yet been scheduled. You've heard of ShinyBadges.com, but you need to check out the New Causes tab. Every item in that section includes a donation to a worthy Liberty Project, like Shire Sharing. So go to ShinyBadges.com, click on the New Causes tab, and get yourself a quality product that not only supports the cause you believe in, but starts a conversation with your neighbors. Plus, get a free gift when you pay with Bitcoin at ShinyBadges.com. RT reports a New Jersey woman is suing the state's Motor Vehicle Commission for denying her attempt to keep God off her license plate by proclaiming her atheism. The defendant, Shannon Morgan, attempted to purchase a vanity plate from the MVC website in November of last year, entering the word atheist with an 8 instead of the A as her desired personalization. But the website denied her request, stating, requested plate text is considered objectionable. The complaint says that Morgan then decided to experiment with other, more religious requests. Confused about why the commission considered her proposed plate objectionable, Miss Morgan entered Baptist and discovered that the website did not flag this proposal as objectionable. Instead, it displayed a preview of personalized plates, reading Baptist, and permitted her to continue the application. Morgan then attempted to contact the MVC to inquire why the atheist plate was rejected and to ask for help in obtaining the plate. She claimed she was given the runaround. Morgan then sent the agency a certified letter reiterating her desire to obtain the vanity plate and find out why it had been deemed objectionable. She received no response. Because the state did not find a potential Baptist plate objectionable, the suit says Morgan believes that the state therefore favors religion over non-belief, which discriminates against atheists like herself. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A report confirms that many Iraqis are still holding a petty grudge about the U.S. invasion. An advanced alien civilization discovers an uninhabitable planet, and a single woman has a Facebook profile picture with her sister. This is The Onion Week in Review. A groundbreaking study published Monday in the Journal of the American Medical Association confirmed that it is impossible to lose weight, no one has ever done it, and those who are trying should give up immediately. Researchers said that findings conclusively prove that shedding excess weight has never happened, changing your physical appearance is impossible, and that all sorts of exercise 
exercises, personal training regimens, and diets will never, ever work. Well, our test results conclusively prove that if you're going to the gym to lose weight, you will fail. You can work out every day and eat nothing, and you still wouldn't lose an ounce. Skinny people will stay skinny. Overweight people will be overweight. That's just how it is. In other news, an area man is outraged. His private information is being collected by someone other than advertisers. And a crowd cheers as this 93-year-old up finally graduates from college. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, launching into the second hour of the program. Join us on our website at freetalklive.com and create the content that you see there. That which you see on the front page as you scroll down, there's numbered items. You can vote on those items. But you do have to take a moment to kind of set your account up. You've got to have a free account from Free Talk Live, another one from Reddit. You link those two accounts together in a very simple process. And then at that point, you can submit content right to the front page of the site. You can vote up, uh, up what you like, down what you don't. And then ultimately in the aggregate, we will be able to look at the front page of our own website and see what it is that you, the listeners, think is interesting, stuff that you want us to talk about. On the air, so you can go to freetalklive.com, get interactive with you tonight. Ian here. Johnny Ray. And Mark. We're going to go to the phones and to the fun. Vince, listening in San Diego, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Vince. Hey, guys. How's it going tonight? What's on your mind, Vince? Well, I've got one of those stories that you have to sort of uh, laugh to stop from crying about. Today, the whoever is in charge of the New York Police Department's Twitter account uh, decided to ask uh, New Yorkers to post pictures of their interactions with the police, and I guess they were hoping to get lots of pictures of, I don't know, cops kissing babies or something. But what it has happened is, you know, hundreds of people are now posting pictures of the police, you know, beating, arresting, uh, you know, there's a dead dog. Uh, <laughs> people are, you know, <laughs> I, they don't seem like they're very satisfied customers. <laughs> yeah, I uh, it was funny because I'd seen that headline. I pulled up one of the stories. The initial photo that the NYPD posted was of, you know, a few cops and some guy standing and smiling by a police car. That's the yeah. kind of thing they were looking for. Right. Obviously. When you go to Vegas, you can uh, get pictures with the cops there on the strip. They they take all kinds of pictures yeah. and stuff like that. And that's what they were hoping for. Some nimrod uh, got a hold of the uh, Twitter account and said, hey, just send us your pictures of your interaction with, uh, with NYPD. PD Blues Finest. And then, as you might imagine, there's so much abuse by the New York Police Department that there's no shortage of various different photos of them abusing, beating, pulling hair, um, looking very angry, and not so customer service oriented. I've got a RT.com story that highlights a few of them. I'll put it up on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter, because this is obviously a story that you have to see to really uh, get a grasp. I mean, you can imagine. It's hilarious. You can I want to know what's happening in that bottom picture there. Uh, looks like a very angry duty? police officer. Uh, I don't think he's off duty. He's just looking angry. He's shouting at somebody, obviously, and uh, attacking someone at the same time. <laughs> Welcome to New York! Yep. <laughs> Vince, yeah, well, hopefully, hopefully this can uh, spread to other cities, too. Maybe we can. I can start a... Uh, my SVPD hashtag and see if we can get some interesting pictures of uh, the service we get down here. Great idea, Vince. Thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate the heads up on the story. The toll-free number is 855-453. And of course, there's no shortage of uh, naughty police. I got another cop stealing somebody's phone uh, on the way here. But since we're talking about Twitter, this seems like a good time for the story, Johnny Ray, that you brought to the table tonight. And actually, Mark, you had this uh, last night, and I had it on Saturday night, and so it's kind of been on, it's been floating about the studio. It feels like this is one has it made it onto the air? Yeah, this is one that we should probably talk about. Uh, Johnny Ray, do you have that story about the Twitterer who's been attacked by the mayor's police department? I do. The story I have is from Fox News. All right. dot com. Mayor ordering raid on Twitter troublemaker riles free speech defenders. A police raid to learn who was behind a Twitter account that mocked an Illinois mayor has so far resulted in one arrest, but officials said Monday the investigation continues as free speech advocates express concern. The account, at Peoria Mayor, was created about nine weeks ago and had about 50 parody tweets, mostly about Peoria Mayor Jim Artis supposedly using illegal drugs and associating with prostitutes before Twitter suspended it in mid-March. The account, which had only about 50 followers, was marked as a parody roughly a week before being suspended. But Peoria police took matters a step further on April 15th by executing a search warrant at the home of a suspect whom they believed was unlawfully trying to impersonate a public official. The Star Journal of Peoria reports 
the warrant and raid were ordered by Artis, who is now facing a public backlash, largely on social media and in editorial pages, where he is being accused of trying to step on First Amendment rights. And a, what the hell would this search warrant have included? A Twitter account? No, I don't know. Computers? Um, Proof that they're the ones that are doing the tweeting? What has he been charged with? Three people at the home during the raid were taken to a police station for questioning. Two other occupants were visited at their workplace, then taken in for questioning. A resident of the home told the newspaper that police seized computers and smartphones in the wow. raid in an apparent attempt to learn who was behind the Twitter account. The crime is a misdemeanor punishable by a maximum $2,500 fine and one year in jail. I believe the crime is impersonating a public official. Is that anywhere in here? Because I'm looking for the, the word charged, and I find one with uh, uh, somebody's been charged with possession of marijuana and drug paraphernalia. I guess it does mention here there is a charge of unlawfully impersonating a public official, but it doesn't make it clear that that was actually charged. Are you seeing that anywhere in here? I'm not seeing that. It almost seems to me like all they had was the they found a bong or something like that in the house. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's... they had to have the they had to have a charge to get the warrant. So, if impersonating an official is the charge to get the warrant, they, they may have to mean... have a charge to get a warrant. Well, they to have search? to have they have to have a proposed they have to have charge. Cause, right? Okay, probable cause that a crime has been committed. Yeah. That crime would fall under the category of a charge hmm. because crimes don't not have charge names. I mean, every law and statute has a you know statute number. That number corresponds usually to a description. That description is the charge. More to share? I find it very troubling, said Angela Campbell, a professor at Georgetown University Law School. It chills people's First Amendment rights to criticize officials, whether it's through parody or just calling somebody a jerk. Campbell, a First Amendment specialist, also questioned whether the charge of unlawfully impersonating a public official applies since its intent is to stop somebody from, for example, posing as a police officer to extract money or sex in exchange for ignoring a traffic violation. That's that's all I've got. Yeah, I think um, I think it's it's kind of interesting. They've got this charge impersonating an official, and I, you know, I mean, I, I, I should you be able to start the Twitter handle, you know, your town mayor mayor at your town dot com or whatever it is, and well, I mean, yes, I, yes, yeah, you I should. Mean, it seems like you should. It doesn't seem like you're committing any crimes here. Um, you know, I mean, is it a good parody or bad parody Real, really be my question. I mean, here in uh, Keene, New Hampshire, one of uh, the bloggers at freekeen.com, Garrett Ian, has for a long time referred to the city manager as Prince John, sort of in jest to suggest that, uh, you know, this is one of the characters from the Robin Hood play from the, you know, the, those novels. And, uh, and that's obviously an insulting sort of a thing. But thankfully, they haven't thought to pull any kind of charges like this. Well, he's out. not impersonating uh, the guy at that yeah. point. Um, but you know, if you, I, I guess it's it would be kind of it'd be kind of interesting. Like here on Free Talk Live, we um, you know we take this whole free state free speech thing pretty seriously. There was a show in the past that has uh, that called itself Free Talk Live, and we didn't do anything about it. We didn't send them a letter from our attorney saying you got to stop this or anything like that. We let them just do their thing. I believe that the main host of that show ended up being assassinated or killed by his girlfriend. And no, he uh, murdered his girlfriend and then killed himself. Okay, yeah. So anyway, I mean, you know, asphyxiation a, a, in the garage. A fine bunch, um, and you know, they got whatever they got in the end. I don't know that uh, I believe in karma because that's certainly I don't think that one deserves the other by any stretch of the imagination. But you know. It's, I, I mean, I think, yeah, people should be able to do this stuff. I, I do think that you could, you could take this too far and sort of be committing fraud. You know what I mean? But I don't think that this, if it's a parody account, what, what are the parodies? You know, I mean. Yeah, I'd be interested to know exactly, you know, what the, the, the statute says there in Illinois as far as in uh, impersonating a politician or government agent or something like that. Like, does that mean that you need to, to do a little bit more? I mean, what are the requirements to get convicted of this particular crime? Although, of course, in uh, Illinois, the people that live there, according to CBS Chicago, nearly 90% of them say Illinois and Chicago governments are corrupt. Yeah. So 
Well, Even if it does say that it's legal what he did, that doesn't mean they won't convict him. And the other thing, who goes around Twitter, um, you know, just trying to find the mayor's uh, Twitter handle? That seems kind of ridiculous. I mean, you'd probably get that from their website, you know. Think, and yeah. so, yeah, I don't know. None of it makes any sense to me. Right, and he had all of 50 followers too, right? Yeah, so this oh, yeah. is like a big, supposedly a, a big deal. 855 450 free. You can share your thoughts. You think that uh, this guy should be in trouble? It's Free Talk Live. Hi, I'm Lynn, and I am totally blind. Like many who are totally blind, I have non 24, a circadian rhythm disorder that can put your sleep wake cycle out of sync with the 24 hour day. But I found out there's a new treatment available for non 24. It's called Hetlios Tazimeltian, the first FDA approved treatment for non 24. The most common side effects of Hetlios include headache, elevated liver enzymes, nightmares or abnormal dreams, and upper respiratory or urinary tract infection. These may occur more often in patients 65 or older. It may cause drowsiness, so limit your activity to preparing for bed. Hetlios has not been studied, and it is not recommended for use in pregnant women, children, or people with severe liver problems. To learn more and to hear the full prescribing information, visit Hetlios.com or call 844-241-2424. That's 844-241-2424. Hetlios is now available for non-24. Talk to your doctor today. Sponsored by Vanda Pharmaceuticals. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. This is the Onion Week in Review. Citing his erratic social behavior, nondescript occupation, and habit of accidentally walking off piers while pretending to read newspapers, acquaintances of 37-year-old Jeff Walther suspect he may be a bumbling spy. Residents of Worcester, Massachusetts are kind of hoping a Panera Bread will show up and plow over an obnoxious neighborhood bakery. Locals have said that the soulless restaurant chain with its simple, impersonal experience would be just the thing to help run the precious mom-and-pop establishment out of business. Callahan's is really lovely and all, but it would be such a relief to have some college-aged kid take my order without making eye contact. I just need a cup of coffee. You know, we're not friends. A follow-up survey of Worcester residents confirmed that 72% of patrons would rather be alerted of an order by a vibrating pager than a kind-faced woman who calls everybody sweetheart. In other news, feds break up a brutal Las Vegas man-fighting ring. A Christmas card ominously makes no mention of the twins. And the Boy Scouts celebrate 100 years of preparing teens for not having cool friends. This is the Onion News Network. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up anything here, toll-free, 855-453. And more information on the Twitterer 
who's been attacked by the police. Actually, it's been his roommates that have really suffered the damage. One roommate in particular, and the Fox News story didn't get into great detail on this, but I did find Johnny Ray, a story from a local news agency there in Peoria, the Journal Star which does have some more information about this. We'll get into that here in a moment. But also want to let you know how to get some great coffee. Yeah, BuzzBox coffee. Delicious coffee. Um, you can go to coffee.freetalklive.com and get a free pound. Try it out. It's 100% organic. It's shade-grown. It's top 1% Arabica-grade coffee. And it's a great deal. Get a free pound of coffee. You pay for the shipping We'll give you a free pound of coffee at coffee.freetalklive.com. And the other thing about BuzzBox Coffee, because we're not just giving away a pound of coffee to everybody for no reason at all. The idea is, is you try it out, you see if you like it, and then you sign up for the subscription. Now, um, BuzzBox Coffee is priced commensurate to other high-end coffees. But one thing that they do that others don't, and this is an important thing, is they care about the people that produce their coffee, and they care about people in third world countries generally. Rather than you feeling guilty once a year or whatever and giving some money to some foreign charity to help people over there, giving them a handout, give them a hand up. Because if you uh, get your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, you're helping us with Free Talk Live. If we get a 1,000 people who sign up to order their coffee from coffee.freetalklive.com, we'll give, be able to give 100 microloans to... People around the world to buy things like bicycles and sewing machines and whatever it is that they need to start a business where they are to provide for their families. Uh, men and women around the world in dire conditions with, you know, that we can hardly imagine. You can get, for the same price, you'd get high-end coffee anyplace else. You'll get healthy coffee, better for you than the, the store-bought stuff, tastes better, um, as, and, and it's, it'll save you a lot of money over the stuff that uh, you get at, say, um, you know, the, the major chains and that kind of thing. Coffee.freetalklive.com. We're talking about what happened to a uh, gentleman in Peoria area when he was, I guess, making fun of the, the mayor on a Twitter account. And wasn't it called, like, at Peoria Mayor or something like that? Something very... Something like that. You know, very straightforward. Uh, his house was raided over that. There's more to the story from PJStar.com. The consequences of a police response to a parody Twitter account have been anything but a joke for Jacob Elliott. He was the only one arrested when seven police officers wearing bulletproof vests with guns strapped to their chest served a search warrant at his home on Tuesday as part of an effort to unmask the author of a fake Twitter account that parodied Mayor Jim Artis. But Elliot wasn't the culprit. His name merely appeared on the Comcast account for internet service at the location. A roommate, John Daniel, actually created the at Peoria Mayor account on March 9th at the house and tweeted enough profanity to raise the real mayor's ire. Now Elliot faces this reality, a felony charge of possessing 30 to 500 grams of marijuana, an indefinite suspension from a job he's worked for 14 years, oh God. and a life turned as inside out as his bedroom that police tossed. I couldn't believe this much force was being used for a fake Twitter account. It blew my mind, he said. It was extremely frightening. I don't think I've ever been so scared in my life. So this comes right back to something we've talked about before here, and that is that it doesn't matter if you've done whatever it is they say you did on your internet connection. So long as your name's on the account, you're going to be held responsible for it in a lot of cases. So what's that? Oh, you've got grandkids that came over and downloaded some pornography on your account and, you know, turns out it was illegal or something like that. Well, guess what? Your name's on the account, so it must have been you who did it. You're responsible, apparently, for every little bit of data that transfers over your Internet account. At least that's what the police here are suggesting sure. uh, by making this action. And then the, they also didn't charge this guy, by the way. That was what I was wondering about the Fox News story. It wasn't quite clear. Now, the idea is maybe they will charge him later with impersonating a public official. But according to one attorney, uh, they, he questions whether or not he can be charged with this particular uh, so-called crime because he believes that in order for this crime to have been committed of impersonating a public official that you have to do it in person 
So if I wanted, you know, if Mark, you were the mayor and I yes. wanted to impersonate you, I'd have to go get a Mark mask or something like that and, uh, and or present myself as though I were you at some sort of public event wherein yeah. Mark was supposed to be speaking. But in fact, I, as the impersonator, was the one who was speaking. Some sort of situation like yeah. that. It has to be in the, in the meat space world. Right. The, the law was not written with the, uh, the web in mind. So some attorneys, you know, defense attorneys are saying this guy's got a good case if they actually do come after him with these charges, which they haven't done. So they raided his house. They confiscated his roommate's weed. And I guess he owned up to it. Oh, yeah, that's my weed. And so they've charged his roommate who had nothing whatsoever to yeah, do. The roommate has been uh, has been suspended from his job. Yes. The roommate's that's the victim That's what happens here. when you get arrested. The, that's the victim. The victim here is the roommate. So the police go get this sort of specious, uh, you know, the mayor get, goes on a witch hunt, gets the police to come up with a specious, uh, uh, you know, search, search order. Uh, some, you know, judge who's in the pocket of somebody signs mm-hmm. it like they always do. They go in. They go hunting around. They don't even charge the dude with it. They get. They find themselves some marriage you want, and then it's somebody else's entirely, and that person's, uh, you know, life is ruined. Yeah, sure. They'll be able to take this to trial in two years and finally be able to prove that, oh, wait, this was a fraudulent uh, search warrant in the first place, and I should have never gotten, you know, whatever. But you'll have still been suspended from your job for yep. 24 months, and you know, not be able to earn any money and you know, or earn lower money and that kind of thing. So, you know, what's the state lose when they break the law? Nothing. Under the statute, I don't believe you can criminalize a personation of a public official that is done over the Internet, said the attorney. That kind of personation is not included in the statute for a public official. The Illinois compiled statute specifically states in Chapter 5, Section 17, Subsection 2B2, quote, a person commits a false personation if he or she knowingly and falsely represents himself or herself to be a public officer or a public employee or an official or employee of the federal government. The same subsection also provides that only violations of these subsections may be accomplished in person or by any means of communication, including but not limited to the use of any Internet website or any form of electronic communication. So, I don't know, that does sound like they might have a case. But the, but the attorney said otherwise. Yeah, the attorney did say otherwise. Given that, O'Day said that the false personation of a public official violation can't be charged as a crime if it's done from the Internet or specifically a Twitter account. I don't know how anyone like this could be considered impersonation. Like if I went up there with a Halloween mask on of the mayor and tried <laughs> to give a speech, everybody's going to be like, who is this clown? Um, I, I, you know, I mean, what exactly, how does this, actually, exactly does this qualify is what my guess, my question well, would be. Well, it doesn't so far. They haven't charged him with it. So, I don't know. But Pure, his roommate is suffering the consequences. Yeah. Uh, Peoria uh, County State Attorney Jerry Brady declined to comment because it involved a pending case. Elliot, who's a 36-year-old rail thin man with thick glasses, thinning hair, a soft voice, and no prior arrests, answered the door when the search warrant was executed at about 520 in the afternoon. On Tuesday, he'd been on his way to a last-minute appointment to get his taxes done. So he was on his way to go and be an obedient little citizen, and they went ahead and they punished him. And now he's facing prison for felony marijuana possession charges because he lived in the same house as somebody who had a Twitter account. 855-450-FREE, that's the toll-free number, 855-450-3733, Free Talk Live. My name is Jessica Armand. I'm an activist, a GCN listener, and mother of three. Our drinking water and food are filled with fluoride and other contaminants that harm our teeth and gums. To protect my family, I created My Magic Mud, an all-natural teeth whitening and strengthening remedy. My Magic Mud is a soft powder that polishes your teeth, reduces sensitivity, and removes harmful toxins from deep inside your mouth. You deserve a bright, healthy smile. Visit MyMagicMud.com and get yours today. That's MyMagicMud.com. The next 30 seconds could save your life or that of someone you love. The Peacekeeper Mini by Tiger Light is the latest in high-tech self-defense. Combining the number one rated Tiger Light with the amazing new Bluetooth GPS crowd alert technology, there is nothing like it. Endorsed by top police, military, and self-defense experts. Pre-order now at one-third the retail price at Indiegogo.com. Search Peacekeeper Mini. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. 
and they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the Liberty Media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, well, and the I Social Security Administration of the Department of Health, Education, and Wealth. Fair and of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town of Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come you to see, think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. What's that you say? You think that uh, you're safe from police raid in your home because you're real cautious and careful? Well, whoops, turns out that uh, your roommate was on Twitter and making fun of the mayor. If you lived in Peoria, Illinois, and you happened to be the roommates of the one guy who did that, because the cops then came in to their home, seven cops, uh, an armed police raid over a Twitter account, and so turns out that one of the roommates had some marijuana in his possession and or in his room. And since the police didn't know... It could know, have just as been easily been an expired prescription or oh yeah. some, a prescription bottle that didn't belong to the right person or something like that. It could have been anything like that. And, you know, you can be real, real cautious, but you never know what your roommates are up to. You never know when the police are just going to raid the wrong house. So you can't be feeling comfortable. These guys can come in your front door anytime they want to on the flimsiest of pretenses, as this story out of Peoria, Illinois, is showing us. All they had to do was accuse this young man of uh, you know, impersonating a politician, which, by the way, they never actually officially charged him with that. So the whole thing, they never charged the guy they were supposedly going after. They ended up charging his roommate with a felony marijuana possession, and now he's looking at prison time. As a result of it, we'll give you more from the raid here in a few moments. And also another uh, person who's been attacked by the police is Ross Ulbricht. You can go to freeross.org and get behind his uh, defense campaign trying to 
fund a fairly expensive attorney to help defend this guy. He's been accused of running the Silk Road, which is an online underground uh, place where people can buy and sell drugs, for instance, or fake IDs, all kinds of interesting things. You can sell legal things there, too. Uh, Silk Road is an amazing phenomenon, and if Ross is the creator of the Silk Road, then he's a hero for bringing more safety and harm reduction to the black market. If he did not create the Silk Road, if he was not the operator of the Silk Road, then he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, he didn't hurt anybody. No one's accused him of hurting anybody, and uh, so they're they're coming after him. It's political uh, persecution, for sure, and so you want to get behind him. You want to help end this insane war on drugs. Help Free Ross by going to freeross.org, contribute with Bitcoin, PayPal, I'll cut a check, freeross.org. So the story here is, again, from pjstar.com. That is the journal star in the Peoria, Peoria area. And I was reading further, Mark, the, uh, the statutes here that I was confused yep. about earlier. Uh, the, the, what was confusing me earlier was there is some sort of uh, violation that you can get under the Illinois statutes that – does qualify if you used an internet website to do the impersonation. All right. But not of a public official. Just so, generally. I guess. The, the the public official section does not have the necessary requirements to allow for someone online to violate that, that section. Okay. After further reading, the attorney's interpretation does seem to be correct. Um, but that didn't stop them from coming after this guy. Nope. It doesn't matter. It does not matter one iota that the law itself has no provision for this situation. They just went ahead and did this anyway well, because they can. Well, you know, I mean, this is supposedly the judicial branch is supposed to stop this stuff. That's the idea of having a judge give the chop to every single, um, you know, search warrant. But the with, with as many search warrants as are issued around the United States at this point, mm -hmm. it's just become a pro forma thing. Just it's a rubber stamp over and over again. There are 40,000 raids in this country every Every year. Think about that number. It's an incredible number. And they're almost exclusively drug war raids. In this case, this was a vendetta um, by a, you know, a, a, a politician that didn't like his name being besmirched. But in the vast majority of the times, they're, they're drug wars. And this is how the... The, the Bill of Rights has been eroded by the drug war. This is how this can happen to you. Now, Elliot is the victim here. He's a 36-year-old, and he was getting ready to go and get his taxes done. He was rushing out the door, and as soon as I opened the door, he says, a female officer shoved her hand into my pocket and screamed, What's in your pocket? Elliot recounted Saturday evening from his front porch. A second officer showed him the document and said they were investigating a cyber crime. Elliot insisted a total of seven police officers were at the house, a figure that Police Chief Steve Settingsgaard Disputed in the wake of the raid, the chief claimed afterward that only four officers were involved. Elliot said there were definitely seven, and they were all in the house. He was detained in an interview room at the police department for hours, unaware of what was happening at his house or exactly why he was being held. Elliot declined to discuss details about the drug charge against him except for one detail. The detective said everyone was going to go to jail if no one claimed the pot. For his first offense, Ellen, uh, Elliot spent more than 48 hours in jail. It's kind of it's it's kind of curious, um, you know. This whole if nobody claims the pot, everybody goes to jail thing. Mm -hmm. I wonder how that would work out in court. Yes, I wonder as well. It seems like a a pretty uh, spurious claim. Because, like, if for instance, um, you know, I, I I'm just trying to come up with something um you know uh what's what's the situation with the bundy the bundy ranch mm -hmm. so let's say somebody from the crowd shoot a, shot a, a bureau of land management person and you know just boom and then you don't know who did it yeah you know there's a crowd of 10 people a gunshot rang out from no that video. crowd of 10 people no video we don't know who killed or who killed or maimed or whatever the blm Isn't agent that reasonable doubt for all 10 in the crowd right i mean if if nobody happens to know in the crowd for whatever reason who did it except for the person who did it obviously they would know um then i you know nobody says anything you know, what what do you do in that circumstance who who are you arresting yeah, I think that's an excellent point. I mean, this is clearly a scare tactic to try to get somebody to own up so they can charge him with the uh, with the crime of possession. Uh, for his first offense, he spent more than 48 hours in jail. The state's attorney's office did not charge him in time for bonding court on Wednesday afternoon, leaving him without a way out of jail until at least 3 p.m. Thursday. When he finally did appear before a judge, his bond was set at $3,000. 
meaning he needed $300 in bail to get out. Sleep has been elusive since then, the anxiety of potentially losing his job. He asked that his employer not be identified, and the crush of media attention on his case has generated, that his case has generated, have taken a toll. He'd rather be working and creating pop culture leftovers, a weekly podcast that he produces with his two friends. He says, I'm suspended indefinitely right now. It's up to the company to determine whether I can have my job back after this, or after after all of this, I'm pretty scared. After all of this, it could be years. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty scared. He says I don't have another source of income. Most of the residents' phones have been returned, but computers, tablets, and video game systems remain in police custody. Elliot wants those items back and accountability for who pushed the police action over a Twitter joke. He says I just don't see any way how this raid wasn't an abuse of power. I have no problem attending the city council meeting on Tuesday and looking Jim Artis, that's the the mayor, in the eye. I want him to know I'm a human being and I've been hurt by this. And I doubt the mayor is going to give a damn. No, no, why would they give a damn? He's a lawbreaker. He had a dried out plant that he intended to set on fire. If he hadn't had it in his house, he wouldn't have got arrested. There are a lot of people who think that way, Mark. They pres- they, they think precisely that. And it's despicable. And this guy isn't a, a criminal and he didn't hurt anybody. And the roommate who actually did the impersonation, you know, to actually have the Twitter account, he hasn't been charged with anything. Well, the fact that this is, um, you know, that no charge has been leveled shows that they had no probable cause in the first place. Um, and would that mean that the pot charge would be thrown out as fruit of the poison tree? It might mean that. I don't know. But when the, the problem I it have should here mean that, but it may not. If I get a piece of paper that says I can go in somebody's house um, and I go in somebody's house, uh, you know, I'm for, for false reasons, I'm it's 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 a crime, but they're not going to get charged with a crime. Nope. The police officers, the mayor, the chief of police, the judge, whoever, whoever's at fault here isn't going to because this is the problem with the bureaucrats is they're never held account, to account. And how could they be held to account in a place like Illinois, where nearly 90% of Illinois vo- Illinois voters believe that corruption is typical in state government, according to a new poll? They're right. At CBS Chicago. How many uh, How many Illinois governors have uh, been gone arrested? To prison? And, yeah, been, yeah, gone to prison yeah, in the last a lot of them. two decades. More than half of Illinois voters believe state government corruption is very common. When the poll accounts for people who say that corruption is somewhat common in the state, a whopping 89% feel that corruption is a way of... Of life in the land of Lincoln. The federal government didn't fare much better with 45% saying corruption is very common. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. We'll continue here. More on the uh, the poll numbers and your calls and thoughts are welcome on whatever you want to discuss here on Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 
1,200-foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you got to keep you and your gap intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big-time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MindThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MindThings.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live, bring up whatever you want here, toll free, 855-453, that's 855-450-3733. People in the Chicago and Illinois region, they don't really trust the government. According to statistics uh, released by CBS Chicago, the Paul Simon Public Policy Institute at the Southern Illinois University did the poll. Uh, They talked to over a 1,000 registered voters and it was uh, fairly recent that they did this. 90%, nearly 90% believe corruption is typical in state government. 45% say that uh, the federal government is also very corrupt. The uh, Four of the past seven governors in Illinois have been sentenced to prison, and most recently Rod Blagojevich, and before him George Ryan. Chicago said the voters is equally corrupt. A total of 85% of those living in Chicago believe county or city political corruption is at least somewhat common, with 55% believing that local corruption is very common. Over the past 30 years, scores of county and city officials have been sent to prison for a variety of schemes, plus some congressmen, too, such as Dan Rostenkowski and Jesse Jackson Jr. These are sad numbers, said David Yepsen. Isolated incidents. Director of the Institute, no wonder many people don't vote and participation in civic affairs seems limited. It's unhealthy for a society to have such little confidence in the integrity of government, and it makes Illinois an unattractive place to live. Frankly, I'm, um, I, I, I find this the most attractive thing about Illinois. That it's corrupt? No, that they're actually arresting their politicians. <laughs> right, because uh, these other places are as corrupt, they're just not getting in trouble for it. I mean, you know, who's going to make the argument that, uh, that really, the argument is that Illinois is more corrupt than Louisiana? I mean, I, you know, there's, there's all kinds of corrupt well, places. And I would contend that, in fact, politics tends to be corrupt generally, um, and that... You know, there may be some payoffs or something that's, uh, you know, below the below the, the table here that's not acceptable. But, 
you know, politics in, is in its nature is corrupt. The idea that pol- politicians are lying scumbags is one of the most universally held beliefs across the world, and yet we still let them rule us i don't get it it's fear people i mean that's all you need to get people are afraid i mean you don't want to go to prison most people don't want to go to jail yeah, and that's what they fear will happen they, they you know they still believe that they have to you know, they have to have the system however the, how, whatever the system is these are the same that's people all, again that, it's fear that would have been claiming that we can't have a government without a king 300 or 400 years ago even though the king is hanging people and disemboweling them or whatever we got to have them you know right. oh, yeah i mean well, sure sure there's uh, uh you know Absolutely, innocent people are going to the gallows, but so what? We got to have a king. God save the king. Sure, Long the live the king. The government's corrupt. We've got to have government. Oh, and you just got raided for a Twitter account. Oh well, what can we do? You can't fight city hall. That's really what it seems to come down to. So again, uh, those of you who love freedom, you probably should consider leaving Illinois. Now, that's not to say that New Hampshire isn't corrupt. I mean, there's plenty of corruption here, just like there is anywhere. In fact, the argument you could make, I suppose, Mark, on the point of you know Chicago arresting people or Illinois arresting their own politicians, you could argue that there's so much corruption that it's it's broken into factions, and that there are different factions vying for the power in the state, and that that that's why you have some politicians being arrested simply because one corrupt faction is moving against another corrupt faction within the within the state for control of uh, of the apparatus that's speculation on my part uh but that could be what's going on there pizza guy is in north dakota you're on free talk live pizza guy yeah i've been having some ruminating thoughts lately considering my actual interaction with the government uh, this happened after I watched uh, and then started reading The Hunger Games. You guys ever seen this? Yeah, I've, I've seen the two movies. I've never read the books. Yeah, I don't like the books. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. No, I well, you know, for me, the book is kind of like uh, Fight Club, where like the book is just like the movie, only longer. But mm-hmm. but you don't you don't like the book. What right? didn't you like about it, Johnny Ray? It screamed young adult fiction to me. You read how many of them? Just I, the one? I read them all. Oh, really? Well, read so you them liked all. them enough to read them all. Uh, I was dating a girl who was a big fan of. Okay, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> and well, uh, the, the writer is clearly a woman. Um, just it, the kind of the internal dialogue is very, uh, you know, can I trust this person? And very social politics. It's a uh, general feminine role kind of dialogue. The writing is, which doesn't come across so much in the movie. But and and if you'll if you'll allow me, pizza guy, the ending. I guess I shouldn't spoil it. Yeah, don't but, spoil it because I haven't yeah, seen no, the. Oh my God. The third movie has yet to come out. There's a violent act that that happens that is uh it's bull. It's it's, it's bull crap. Unbelievable. It it violates my my principles of of, of liberty. Hmm. Yeah, there's a twist ending you don't like. Let's leave it there and not spoil it because spoilers is like almost like rape for me. That's bad. You can't <laughs> don't spoil things for people. That's that's awful. All right. Anyway. So what were you calling about tonight? The reason I did call, yeah. Uh, well, I wanted to talk about, um, you know, the idea of capital city in the Hunger Games and my interaction with the government. You know, if you think about it, government's done pretty well for me, at least my direct interaction with it. You know, they gave me roads. They gave me uh, uh, a decent education. Nobody you know, wants to hear about your that. white privilege, dude. <laughs> right? But they, they did pretty good by me. Um and everybody complains about how all this spending can't go on forever and eventually it's got to come and bite us. But uh, the fact of the matter is is that there is actually no such thing as a national debt. It is it is what it is. We don't have to pay that back. We pay the interest on it. And the devaluation comes through the currency because everybody who holds the currency is the backer of that currency. And guess what? Americans don't hold most of the currency. So when we print via inflation, what we're really doing is taxing the Chinese and the Japanese in order to pay uh, for our lavish lifestyle. It's actually doing pretty well for us. It's well, until it's until they get benefit. sick of it. Sure, but why would they? If they get sick of it and throw it off, here's the thing. If they decide to be like, oh, I'm done with the dollar, guess what? Their largest investment, tanks. They're tied into it. It's, it's, it's like... Uh, I don't know what to compare it to. Well, but, I don't. But, I, uh, 
I, I don't think that uh, that the American consumer lifestyle and living on debt really improves our quality of life or makes Americans very happy. And happiness is my number one goal. And, and I don't think that the unique position America has in the world and the excess that that um, that we all live in from from whether you're living under the poverty line or above it, uh, people are miserable because happiness comes from fulfilling your potential and you know growing and becoming a living mighty up to person. Your word too, right? Like you know, there's a bunch of lies surrounding the uh, the currency. It's hard to be happy when you're in debt. And on or on well, welfare, you're miserable. I think we're just just geared to be miserable, and that's why we're libertarian. I think most people are actually pretty happy, and Look, it's because the, I've the been capital. in debt and you know going bankrupt and not particularly libertarian at the time. And I was, I can assure you, I was not happy. Well, Americans have spending problems, but I'm I'm talking about the spending of the United States government. What what I'm trying to say is that um, as libertarians or as whatever we are, uh, we we like to say, oh, you know, the spending has to come from somewhere, and you know, you're actually paying for it, and it's not fair, and no, oh, you'd be happier if you had that money. But if there was, but my my kind of my overall point is that if there was no U.S. government, if there was no capital city using the Federal Reserve to suck in the value of capital from outside the United States through its dirty dealings, we would have a lower standard of living, is what I'm saying, that the government does bring home the bacon internationally. I agree with that. Absolutely. Um, you know, the, the, the federal U.S. federal government does, uh, you know, bring in wealth from other countries, sort of forces that uh, upon them. I mean, you can see that by the fact that the, the military is so large and vast and um, they won't allow anybody else to grow their military. That's always considered a threat. Um, so, I mean, that's obvious that, uh, that yes, our lifestyles are better, um, but I don't like that. I find that to be completely unfair. That upsets me. Yeah, me too, and that's that's kind of my point, and that's why I brought it. If you haven't seen The Hunger Games, and I'm talking this to everybody out there in Radio Land, if you haven't seen The Hunger Games, watch The Hunger Games. And don't pay attention to the Battle Royale fight scenes or even the bad acting of, of uh, Katniss Everdeen. I didn't think it was watch that bad. It. I too little wooden. Anyway, right. um, watch, watch the people in Capital City and think and consider for yourself, we, the United States of America, is the capital city of the world yeah. and our citizens are those capital citizens but even and more so, so we, washington dc is the capital city of the u.s i mean when, when there was the economic downturn housing prices were tanking around the country there were a few counties where it wasn't happening and all those counties were sort of directly um, adjacent or secondarily adjacent to washington dc yeah i think i just saw a headline that four out of the 10 most wealthy counties are right there yep uh hey thanks uh, pizza guy for the call tonight uh, what percentage of the dollars are outside of the United States? Because that was kind of the crux of the argument there, that there was so much money outside Lots of the them. U.S. 855-450-FREEZE, the toll-free number, 855-450-3733. Hour 3 next, it's Free Talk Live. There's a treasure hunt going on at MathGate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, MathGate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to MathGate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to MathGate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at MathGate.info. Lumber Liquidator's once-a-year hardwood flooring clearance sale is going on now. This is the biggest flooring event of the year with five days of historic hardwood flooring deals like top-quality clearance flooring for just 19 cents a square foot, gorgeous Aberdeen birch engineered hardwood, and even horizontal natural bamboo for just $1.49. Plus, more deals at your local store. So go to LumberLiquidators.com right now and find the store nearest you. But hurry, their famous April sale ends Monday the 28th. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. You're listening to the Liberty Beat, your daily source for liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. This is Justin Arman. And this is Jessica Arman. Here with your Liberty Beat for April 22nd, 2014. Gold open today at $1,289, silver at $19.41, and Bitcoin is trading at $494. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication for all your print and audio duplication needs. Online at affordablesound.com or give them a call at 512-459-5253. And from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM, June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours at voiceandexit.com. And from The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time at coreymoreshow.com. And now the news. Activists from around the world are concerned about the growing use of smart meter technology. Smart meters are electronic devices used to record the use of electricity and other details about a residence via remote reporting. Citizens in California, Illinois, and Texas have launched campaigns striving to raise awareness about the possible health dangers related to the technology, as well as potential privacy violations. The devices are capable of recording detailed information about appliance usage, as well as the number of people in a home. To learn more about smart meters and how you can get involved, come to Brave New Books on May 10th at 7 p.m. for a screening of Take Back Your Power. Brave New Books is located at 1904 Guadalupe in Austin, Texas. A federal appeals court has overturned a previous ruling that allowed the U.S. Department of Justice to maintain secrecy around its targeted assassination program. The lawsuit was brought forth by the New York Times and other journalists seeking the release of a Justice Department memo dealing with the targeted drone bombing of U.S. citizen Anwar Alawaki and his 16-year-old son. A three-judge panel unanimously ruled that the government no longer had a right to justify secrecy in light of several public officials making statements justifying these killings. On Monday, the Supreme Court rejected ExxonMobil's appeal of a $105 million settlement. The case deals with the contamination of New York City's groundwater with a gasoline additive known as MTBE. ExxonMobil is accused of ignoring warnings from its own scientists and engineers regarding the dangers of using the additive in areas that use groundwater for drinking. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but they do take Bitcoin. Online at rrbi.co or by phone at 800-874-9760. And from Central Texas Gunworks, home of one of the first Bitcoin ATMs in the country, where you can buy and sell Bitcoin. Visit the ATM at 321 West Ben White Boulevard, Suite 203. And from Cabo Bob's, Southwestern Burritos with homemade tortillas. Online at CaboBob's.com. You're listening to The Liberty Beat for April 22nd, 2014. Be sure to check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com. Yahoo News is reporting that President Obama is prepared to grant clemency to those who are jailed for nonviolent drug crimes. According to the unnamed official, the pardon could affect hundreds if not thousands of currently incarcerated inmates. The report follows an announcement in January that the Obama administration is working to take the unprecedented step of encouraging defense lawyers to suggest that low-level offenders should be let out of prison early. Obama has been under pressure to make reforms from advocacy groups and family members of people who are serving mandatory minimum drug sentences. However, despite his administration's public support for criminal justice reform, Obama has used his power to grant clemency less frequently than nearly all other U.S. presidents. Today is Earth Day and timed with the annual commemoration. 
is the kickoff of a five-day Washington, D.C. rally to protest the Keystone XL Pipeline Project. The Cowboy and Indian Alliance, comprised of Native Americans, farmers, and ranchers, will open their reject and protect encampment with ceremonies at the U.S. Capitol. The five-day protests will wrap up Saturday at the National Mall when the Cowboy and Indian Alliance will make closing arguments against the pipeline. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Learn more at GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. And from Bitmain Tech, creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner. Order yours today at BitmainTech.com. You've been listening to the Liberty Beat. Remember, freeing your mind is freeing our world. This is the Onion Week in Review. According to a Stanford University study released Wednesday, there is no logical reason why planes are able to fly. Reiterating that they fully understand the concepts of lift, thrust, and propulsion, lead physicists told reporters they were still unable to reasonably explain how a large 500,000-pound object is capable of staying up in the air without falling. We've come up with several theories, including wind propulsion, some sort of gravity suspension effect, also the possibility that the clouds pull the plane skyward, but... You know, beyond that, just don't understand how a large metal tube could just kind of float in the air like that. And it's going at like 500 miles per hour, which means that when I'm on a plane, I'm also going 500 miles per hour? I mean, that's crazy. I mean, why is my hair blowing back and forth? The Stanford team added they plan to devote the next two years to a new study on why telephones can hear. In other news, an urban planner is stuck in traffic of his own design, and a kid screams behind a passenger during an entire plane crash. Visit theonion.com slash newsbeat for more. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that are waiting for you there on the site. You get to create the content that you see there. Everything on the front page was put there by listeners just like you. And you can uh, add to it. You can submit content, find a news article, blog post, YouTube video, something you want to share with other listeners. You can just submit it there at uh, freetalklive.com, and then it'll appear on the site for people to vote on. You can vote up what you like and vote down what you don't. freetalklive.com. We go right back into your phone calls and thoughts. We've got Mark in Utah to kick things off this hour, listening to KZNU in St. George. Hey, Mark. Hi. Um, I just kind of want to make a comment about the last caller that was talking about who holds the, the the national debt or, I guess, what you'd call bonds in the country. And um, I think that he – well, from what I've read, he's incorrect about saying that it's the majority of U.S. debt is held by foreign nationals or foreign countries. Yeah, I should have caught um, that. He mentioned China. He mentioned China, and from, from the la- last – thing that I read about it, and sometimes it's hard to get the exact data, the Chinese probably own something between 8 and 12 percent of the U.S. debt, and that's a substantial amount. It's definitely enough that if uh, the U.S. dollar collapsed, they would suffer from that, but the vast majority of debt, and I'm, when I say majority, I mean literally over 50 percent of the debt is held by American citizens and American nationals. Hmm. And it's something that goes back from uh, – the Federal Reserve System is a lot different than the National Bank, which existed from the time of you know, George Washington's presidency. But the the idea behind it is the same, and it's the idea that when you tie the nation's um, like credit to the wealthiest members of the nation – then and you can make sure that they are going to see a profit or see returns on that that the country will continually be able to be fed by their investments and even though they're they, you know they don't get back everything they basically get back the dividend that it can continually kind of create this um this like everlasting pool of money that doesn't actually fully exist. Even in the time of Alexander Hamilton, I believe that in actual physical uh, specie like gold, the United States uh, National Bank only ever held about 15 percent of what they actually claim to hold through bonds. And so when inflation, as they control the inflation, and the U.S. doesn't have huge inflation, but it is affecting the cost of the everyday American lives, especially the ones that don't have 
their money tied up into that. You know, you have a thousand dollars in the bank. Well, in ten years, that a thousand dollars is going to be equivalent to, you know, especially if you're making almost no interest. It's probably going to be more equivalent to maybe nine hundred and fifty dollars in ten so years. Over time, well, I, you should <laughs> in ten I, years. I think it'll be less than that. Yeah. It probably is. I'm just yeah. giving a very conservative estimate. I'm just saying that really conservative. you're losing through inflation more than you're getting from any kind of money that you don't hold in these high-yield bonds. I was doing my own grocery shopping uh, 10 years ago, and bread didn't cost what my wife is spending on it now by any stretch of the imagination. Mm. Um, she's spending like four bucks a loaf or something like, like two that. two or one, right? Yeah, less than, less than two. Yeah. Um, it was like 150 And I, you know, I'm sure she's buying higher-end bread than I was buying, but I, I would say that when you're looking at real things like food, fuel, and housing, um, there's been, you know, there's been some really significant changes. The The Consumer Price Index doesn't rate those things. Which is interesting because they're the most costly parts of the normal yep. American's existence. Big fat lies. <laughs> anyway, that was just the comment I was going to make. Thanks for taking my call. Thanks, Mark, well, yeah. for your call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. And this is what it comes down to. It gets very um, complicated, but it's it's true that when he says that basically it's the Federal Reserve, which is a group of banks – not a government agency. It's this is sort of a quasi-agency, but they've come together to be the lender of last resort to the United States federal government. So when he says U.S. nationals, he means essentially a small group of U.S. nationals, not like every U.S. citizen. So a citizen, you know, like the United States government isn't buying the United States government's debt. The Federal Reserve, which isn't the United States government, is buying its debt, mm -hmm. and these are the bankers to which the United States government is beholden that you know nothing about as a citizen. And, um, you know, they're very secretive. It's difficult to even know who the member banks are. They've changed over time. You're welcome to share your thoughts. 855-450-FREE. That is the ProXPN toll-free line, 855-450-3733. We talked earlier about Twitter and a Twitterer who has been had his home raided by the police in Peoria, Illinois. On the other hand, there's another uh, person who's been on Twitter who claims she's gotten PTSD from this. Apparently, Mark, you posted this earlier today on Free Talk Live's Facebook page. A lot of people were uh, were commenting on this story. Scoffing, mostly. Dailymail.co.uk reporting on a Washington woman that's come under fire over claims that her PTSD was caused by online harassment. And Twitter trolls is equal to that of military veterans. Melody Hensley says she was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder 16 months ago following online abuse, which she says is the result of her being an outspoken feminist and atheist. She caused upset to many military veterans and their families and friends when she claimed that her PTSD from Twitter trolls was as bad as the mental anguish suffered by those who are on active duty. Ms. Hensley, head of an organization promoting you know, secular ideas. I kind of, I, I, I guess I agree with this lady to some extent. Um, PTSD is something that comes from your mind, mm -hmm. right? Like it's not, ev every mind isn't the same. There are some people that can walk on a battlefield, slit everybody's throat with a bayonet, you know, stab them in the gut, walk off the battlefield, fly home in a plane, and go to work and They'll play with their kids. Or they're fine. Right, like there are people that have this mind. I don't think there are too many of those people, but yes, those there, people must exist. They're called psychopaths. No, the, the people that can compartmentalize in in a very specialized way. Um, this, you know, look, people come, people come home. It affects. Oftentimes, war can affect people poorly, and, and this kind of thing, and it takes a long time to get over. But you know, there are people that can do this. There are other people that can ex can look at the pictures online of the war experience, and then they feel. Um, they're affected as though they were in the battle because, yeah, she wasn't over there fighting a war. She was just being hassled because I'm guessing she's a jerk online is my guess. I mean, I'm just – It seems like she's a female Dave in New York. I, I don't know. I mean, she just it. Let's let's go ahead and say, for the sake of argument, that she's um, internalizing abuse. That maybe she uh, focused on herself. Um, you know, I mean, she says, "I'm a feminist and I'm an atheist." You know, these aren't really relevant parts of the conversation until you start blaring them all over the internet, and then uh, well, right. You know, if you go on a forum full of Christians and post about your atheism, you're probably yeah. going to get some pushback. 
If you treat people like you're an a-hole, you're going to get treated back like, you know, I mean, that's th- th- this is the, the push and pull of it. So do I think she could have ex- can be experiencing PTSD to a high level? Yes, I do. Now, you claim you have it from going to church or something, right? I, I believe that, you know, I, th- I think that PT. Now, I'm not going to claim, I'm not going to go so far as to claim that I my PTSD is bad, as bad as some soldiers, but... You know, the fact is, some soldiers don't experience PTSD at all. So I suppose that the um, claim would be valid. But yeah, I, I believe that my religious indoctrination as a young person caused essentially PTSD in me. I was threatened with eternal damnation, torture for all eternity. Mm-hmm. Um, I developed some ideas around that, and at some point or another, my mind revolted uh, against that teaching, and I had a very difficult time because, I, you know, there's there's an incredible amount of fear. Well, you've beaten it logically, but it doesn't stop those ideas from coming back and, and sort of staying with you over time and yeah. haunting you, right? And I've been working on it. Um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I've Like, I've you seen... know better, but they keep coming. It does happen. Less so now, but... It has happened in the past. Ms. Hensley is the head of an organization promoting secular ideas. She suffered from PTSD for more than a year, according to her Twitter account. In an interview with DailyDot.com, Ms. Hensley says she became a target for atheist, misogynists, and men's rights activists a few years back. So actually, apparently it was her own atheists that were... We're attacking her here. Uh, we'll give you more That's details. That's happened in the a- a- atheist world that there's uh, this sort of schism over feminism. Uh, 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number here. Do you think that there's a valid claim that one could have PTSD from arguments online with people? Really? It's Free Talk Live. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Amanda Bosold here from Midas Resources. Today, April 4th, 2014, gold opened at twelve ninety seven sixty. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for thirteen forty four seventy seven, six seventy two thirty eight for a half ounce, or three thirty six nineteen for a quarter ounce. Again, that's thirteen forty four seventy seven, six seventy two thirty eight, and three thirty six nineteen. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Can one get PTSD from getting in online arguments with people? Having people send you nasty messages over your Twitter account on a message forum, for instance. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I mean, there have been plenty of uh, instances, for instance, on the Free Talk Live BBS, where people have gotten into some pretty heated debates and name-calling. I mean, this is not an uncommon thing on the Internet. People who are uh, feeling safe behind the comfort of their keyboard and their mouse and the screen and, you know, they can say what they want without actually having to look somebody in the eyes. You know, people will be nastier online because of that. That seems to be the way things go. And now you've got a lady who's claiming she has PTSD. She is living in the Washington. I'm not sure if it's D.C. It doesn't make it clear here It's if it's Washington State or D.C., but uh, anyway, her name is Hensley, Melody Hensley, and she claims that it, uh, as a result of online harassment, she's now suffering from PTSD that is as severe as men who've been in uh, wartime. Uh, you you know, believe that? I, I don't believe it. Uh, one of the problems I have at the outset, and I don't like to argue semantics too much, but I've always understood trauma to be a physical injury as in blunt trauma and so forth. So psychological trauma is sort of a contradiction in terms. So you don't believe in PTSD at all then? I don't know. I believe that you could have uh, PTSD if if you've been um, subject to or witness to a trauma of some kind, like somebody getting their nuts blown off or getting their their head head bashed in. Yeah. But um, getting into arguments online I don't think can cause PTSD. I think it can cause discomfort and what about threats of uh, violence? Do you actually have to see the violence to be threatened by um, to, 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 to experience PTSD? So if, for instance, you mm. were, um, you know, you're captured, you're a veteran, you're captured by the enemy, um, you're held in some kind of confinement or whatever, and every day they say, uh, um, you know, good job, Wesley, tomorrow I'll most likely kill you in the morning, or whatever it is that they say, and they're convincing in the way that they say it. Um, can you have PTSD in that way? No, I don't think so. You can have something else and something that can ruin your life, but PTSD for me is when you have been in Baghdad for a year and um, you've you've th- seen you've it been, all. Yeah, you've there there have been concussive blasts happening around you, and like I say, you've seen these horrific things. And then when you go back home, the war comes back home with you. That's PTSD. I don't know if I would uh, be as, I guess, I, I don't think I would come as far as you would on this one, Johnny Ray. Like, I share where some of where you're coming from, but I think that being held against your will in a, uh, a, a prison cell and being threatened with violence and or being subject to hearing violence, like, even if they never actually did put you to death, even after threatening you, but you're hearing, you know, blood-curdling screams in the background, people being tortured. I mean, you know this could come around on you. I could see that as being pretty traumatic. The way I see it, and I'm not trying to mitigate anything for this woman, I believe she's probably brought all the trauma that she's experienced on herself. Um, that's the way I see it. I mean, you can, there's an off button on that machine. That's my point here. But, but um, you know, I, I do think that 
you know, that she can, that she's experienced the trauma. And, you know, because your mind, look, your eyes, your ears, your nose, all your senses, these are inputs into your brain. Your brain experiences threats in a, in whatever way your brain experiences threats. So, um, you know, whether it's, you know, visually you see what may happen to you, what has happened to your friends, you know, you feel guilt in that arena, whatever it might be that causes the, the PTSD. I absolutely think that a person who, you know, has a certain type of mind can internalize that from probably she's probably received threats. There's no doubt about it on the Internet. Happens who hasn't? all the time. I mean, <laughs> anybody who's outspoken uh, about something, there's a good chance somebody's going to threaten you at yep. some point. Some the point best thing you can do. do is hit the delete button. I mean, if you want to get all paranoid about it, that's up to you. So that's my that's my. And that's the other thing here. If you're being held in a foreign prison or even a local prison and it's an awful experience, you're held there against your will. You pointed out she could turn this off. She could stop checking the messages on Twitter. She could stop going onto the forums where it is that she's getting into these arguments with people. But like our uh, one-time caller Dave in New York who was always calling and complaining about how awful people were to him online, turned out that he was the one who was evoking a lot of that. It was his posts that were, uh, you know, that were starting a lot Acerbic. of the conversations. Yeah, and that he was not exactly being Mr. Friendly and just being attacked for being a good guy. He was being awful and was being attacked by other awful people. I mean, you know, kind of get what you put out there. And so who knows what this lady's been posting to, uh, to elicit the responses that she's been receiving. She claims that uh, the results, uh, she claims that the, the hate is coming because she's an atheist and a feminist, and apparently some atheists do not like feminists, so they've gotten into uh, online debates. Well, feminism is this topic that can, uh, you know, that it spans a broad spectrum. I don't know what she means when she says feminist. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are some people that, uh, you know, some feminists that believe that uh, what they call penis in vagina, so P-I-V sex is always rape. Whoa. So, sex, coitus, as we have defined it for tens of thousands of years among human beings. Even if she's begging for it, it's rape. Rape. <laughs> now, I, I would suspect, I'm just going to apply, um, you know. I'd love some, to hear the argument for that one. Uh, well, uh, go look. Just, just look it up. Feminism, <laughs> P-I-V. You'll find it. Okay, um, great. It, it's, it's out there. I'm just assuming that these are lesbians that don't want men messing with their what they consider to be their turf. I don't know. That's just me coming up with something. <laughs> They've got all their arguments of, of whatever they might be. There's also feminists that believe that women should have the right to vote and own property. Now, it's pretty difficult to argue um, for the former and against the latter, in my mind. So I don't know what she means when she says a feminist. Um, I do know <laughs> that there are lots of atheists out there, many of whom don't get in arguments at all about their beliefs online because they don't think it's of any value. Most of the atheists that get in arguments online are damaged goods like me and have their religious experiences. You got something to prove. Yeah, sort of. A, they're, they're messed up. And... You know, I can say I've said some pretty mean things to some people online regarding uh, religion. I just want to I want to kind of tick them off. You know why? Because I'm ticked off when it comes to religion. I'm arguing with the old me, not with you online. And uh, so I wouldn't doubt at all she's had some some pretty horrifying experiences. <laughs> Okay, so I have found an article about this PIV thing. We'll have to talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, more, though, about this lady who is claiming she has PTSD, Melody Hensley. One man in particular has waged a two-year hate campaign <laughs> against her by publishing her tweets using Storify. Others have cut and pasted her tweets into YouTube videos. Stop bel tweeting! <laughs> belittling her claims of PTSD. So you're right. Now that she's so she's had people making fun of her for a while on online, and that's been upsetting. Now she's claiming to have PTSD, so of course they're making fun of her having PTSD, and that's further upsetting to her. Well, and, and there's also you got to toss into this little uh, blender of, of nutty. Uh, you've got to you've got to throw in the sort of uh, the soldier worship that goes on uh, around the world, um, especially in Western countries. Yeah, at least that's my experience. It, so you know when she compares herself in any way to somebody who's signed up to kill and die for politicians in whatever capital they might be, that's going to be really upsetting to people, specifically people that like the flags of those countries. Uh, she says that she was bedridden for the first six months during her diagnosis. 
and that a uh, cyber mob of more than 400 people have been harassing her. Bedridden, but still could check her online stuff and tweet. That's true. 855 450 free. She does remain active on Twitter, and even though she's working from home now as a result of her PTSD. What do you think? Is this lady for real? You believe this? It's Free Talk Live. If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now, thanks to Dan Pillow, you can get the tax help you need to end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pillow. I've helped thousands of people reduce or eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. With the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. Or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The Empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. MeowBit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. MeowBit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of Namecoin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, MeowBit. Go to MeowBit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. If you're looking for work, there's a piece of paper more important than your resume. It's the cover letter attached if you're snail mailing or the email to which you attach your resume. Make it four short paragraphs. Paragraph one, say that you're applying for work. The person you're sending to gets a ton of mail about all sorts of things. If you have a password, that's your first sentence. Tom Nelson tells me you and I should meet. Paragraph 2, what you do and how that relates to the opening. Be as specific as possible. Paragraph 3, why you want this particular job. I'm originally from Boston, so I know the market well. I have family and friends in the area, so this would be a homecoming for me. Paragraph 4, unless the job posting stipulates no calls, and I will call you to follow up. Thank you in advance for your time. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm.
This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Melody Hensley, the lady who's claiming she has PTSD from her online interactions, she's got 3,000-some followers on Twitter. She says, I'm an activist. Staying off the Internet isn't a choice for me. You'd be asking me to give up who I am and my job. That will never happen. Yet at the same time, she's claiming that it was the Internet, the people on the Internet. Over 400 people, she claims, have been harassing her, uh, a, a cyber mob, as, uh, as she called it. And she's claiming to have PTSD, wondering how you feel about it. Is this even possible? 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733, because it sounds like she's traumatized herself into having this PTSD. It's not like anything, you know, it's not like she witnessed some sort of horrors of war uh, or had any sort of external trauma happen to her that she couldn't control. She absolutely can control all of this, and she can certainly control her response to it. When people are nasty to you on online you just don't take it seriously it's just a twitter account well hold on just a second um i mean i don't know how this lady was here but i mean i get the the everything i've read in this entire article says to me online a-hole um now mm-hmm. i don't know her i don't know how she's been but i know me and i have been online and i've act, acted like a jerk in the past you cannot expect to go online act like a jerk and people just to see the wisdom yeah. of the crap you have said and be convinced and then suddenly treat you well. No, this it's going to is... be a, a stream of putrid filth spat back at you. <laughs> right. So you you have not done us a favor with your golden shower of the knowledge. The internet's going to take your uh, nastiness, amplify it by 10, and feed it right back That's to you. That's what they do. Melody Hensley is traumatized by a relative lack of attention. She, she needs the attention. She needs the attention of certain people. And the the mythical four hundred haters um, aren't giving her the kind of attention she wants. Right, she wants all positive attention. But I'm sorry, lady, if you're claiming you're an activist and this is what you live for, then get with the program. Because if you're an activist and you have any kind of impact, people are going to hate you. There's no doubt about it. As a matter of fact, um, you know, now that bitcoins are getting popular, people are hating on bitcoins. Paul Krugman has got all kinds of bad things to say about bitcoins. And bitcoins don't even have a personality. They're not out there doing anything. Mm-hmm. Now, And most of the adherents to bitcoins, they aren't terrible jerks about it. Maybe some are. I don't know. I haven't seen it uh, too bad. Certainly, they've got some bad things to say about the Federal Reserve. But if you want to get some bitcoins, if you think that, uh, you know, perhaps the Maybe you think the U.S. dollar's days are numbered and that some new technology in the area of currency is going to step in and that technology is here now in the form of Bitcoin. Certainly many people believe this. That means that it's a good time to get Bitcoins now. The way to do that, cashintocoins.com. You can use a money order, check, or wire transfer. Uh, The rates are great. Cashintocoins.com. As a matter of fact, I believe that the rates are the best I've seen anywhere for getting uh, Bitcoins, but I could be wrong. I haven't checked everywhere. Cashintocoins.com. Orders under $40 carry no fee. So just get a, li- just get a little and try it out. Cashintocoins.com. All right. So uh, toll-free number here again, 855-450-FREE. Any other thoughts you guys want to share about this lady claiming she has PTSD from what people have been saying to her online? I believe... Her laughable claim. You think she does have PTSD? I do. Because she's done it to herself. I think she was mental from the get-go. You think the PTSD started before the uh, internet harassment? Or? No, not the PTSD, but I think that she um, internalizes stuff way too, uh, you know, she, like, she's just a little mental from the get-go, and mm-hmm. then, you know, that results in, you know, bad behavior that she then thinks uh, people should treat her well for, and... I've seen it over and over again. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know her. I'm just looking at the article and seeing what I see, and that's what comes to my mind. Johnny's uh, shaking his head. I have nothing to add. All right. Your thoughts are welcome here. 855-450-FREE. Let's go to Liberty Phoenix. He is on the line on Skype. Hey, Phoenix. Hey, guys. Um, It sounds to me like this lady just wasn't aware of the level of connectivity that you get when you go online. And she just needs to have a little bit thicker of a skin. I mean, she obviously didn't put up that, have that thicker skin, so she was able to, to be hurt and scarred and traumatized by the 
the level of connectivity that she got because there obviously there was people that didn't agree with how she feels and when you put your opinions out there into the ethers of humanity you have to be prepared for all you know all colors of the rainbow to yeah come one has to wonder was this her first time online did she just get online for the first time and open up a twitter account and start tweeting i mean how could you possibly go go so far as getting on twitter without knowing the the sort of the demeanor of people on the internet and how people behave when they are anonymous and they uh, are having their identities protected i mean that brings out the worst in people and it doesn't take very long to figure that out and it certainly doesn't at least you know maybe it's just me having been on the internet for so long i've steeled myself to this it doesn't matter you can say whatever you want about me and it's fine it doesn't get to me at all i mean sticks and well, stones that is true, Ian. The, the longer you're you're out there the the less it tends to hurt so yes she definitely i would that would be something i would be wondering is how long she's actually i mean is she a 65 year old grandmother that no she's a on, young woman well, not particularly yeah, young, but she's young as in like maybe early thirties at the yeah, latest. That looks about right. Yeah, she grew up. That she's my age. She grew up with all of you know. She's an eighties baby. She should be well aware. Absolutely, I there's say there's no, no excuse that. here. What else did you want to share with us tonight, Phoenix? Um, that's about it. Uh, I'd love to give another shout out for Khan Academy. Just Khan finished Academy. Uh, this is yeah, uh, the online site. schooling thing. That's uh, was it free? It's a MOOC. A yeah. what? Yeah, I've been studying. It's a MOOC, a massively online. Uh, is the Q? Uh, is it a Q? M U Q? It's M O O C. M O O C. Online college. I think that's the last two. That's the last two letters. Massive uh, open online course. Groovy. Course. There you go. Yeah, you like it, huh, like Phoenix? That. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I've been uh, studying computer science. How do they make tonight, money? Do people to... just donate to them? Um, I don't know. I don't even Bill really Gates. see a donation button at all. <laughs> Is it really Bill Gates behind yes. it? Yes. It's Salman. Well, Salman Khan is the man behind it, and he's a big uh, supporter of Bitcoin. He does. Uh, he's got a whole series of classes mm-hmm. about Bitcoin on at Khan Academy. Cool. Phoenix, thanks for the he's call. He's controlled tonight. by the New World Order, <laughs> Johnny Ray. Uh, so yeah, you know, feel free. You can call in and be nasty to us, and we're not going to come down with PTSD claims about it. If you're getting too much uh, guff on the internet, cut back, man. You don't have to be on there at all times. Oh, Mark is making a finger in uh, his hand motion to indicate we should talk about PIV. I'm guessing is that what you're getting <laughs> that's what, at there? That's what I'm talking about. I agree with that, Mark. This is pretty ridiculous here. PIV is always rape. Okay, is the name of the story from Witchwind.wordpress.com. Just to recall a basic fact, intercourse slash PIV is always Ray, plain and simple. This is develop a developed recap from what I've been saying in various comments here and there in the last two years or so. So this is where she sums it up. I'm presuming it's a she. As a rad femme, as in radical feminist, I've always said PIV, that is penis in vagina, is rape. And I remember being disappointed to discover that so few radical feminists stated it clearly. How can you possibly see it otherwise? Stated it clearly? You mean it is sided with your bananas opinion? Intercourse is the very means through which men oppress us, from which we are not allowed to escape. It's with our mesmerizing organs. (laughs) Yet, some instances of or PIV and intercourse may be chosen and free? That makes no sense at all. Well... (laughs) <laughs> I just. What about the opposite? What about VOP? What about vagina over penis? Isn't that also equally as true as PIV? I mean, hasn't this woman ever had sex on top? I am sick of your white male privilege. You're just spouting off here. <laughs> First, she says, intercourse is never sex for women. Only men experience rape as sexual and define it as such. Sex for men is the unilateral penetration of their penis into a woman, or anything else replacing and symbolizing the female orifice, whether she thinks she wants it or not. Yeah, that's pretty much true for me. Which sex for a woman is a surrender, and sex for a man is a conquest. I I I don't agree with that. I wouldn't give that. uh, I wouldn't wouldn't go that far. There's plenty of women out there conquesting men. Eight fifty five four fifty freeze the toll free number. You can take control here. Your thoughts on PIV? Coming up, free talk live. On free talk live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact. I believe. Like I said. Uh, a lot of 
where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. Free Talk Live. Is it ever appropriate to use violence to oppose the state? I can't say I would blame somebody for wanting to meet the SS at the front door with the clubs and the guns or whatever they could to defend their family. I wouldn't blame them. Gandhi went to jail. What if he had met the uh, English at the door with shotguns instead of going to jail? I don't want to talk about this anymore because, you know, it's just madness. I don't need to be playing these scenarios out where what am I going to do if this happens? What am I going to do if that happens? It's not a good mindset. I'm going to get the chainsaw out and cut a couple of trees across the driveway and I'm going to sit out there with a 50 cow <laughs> bull and I'm going to pick him off. I'm going to pick him off. You know, It'll drive crazy, you crazy nuts. I mean, you're going to die from high blood pressure yeah. and a lot of shiny guns. I'm a ticking time bomb waiting to go off. Coppers. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Wolverine. Brrr. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. P-I-V. I had not heard of it until tonight. Um, apparently it stands for penis in vagina. No, this is not some sort of pandering to the lowest common denominator. This is really like, this isn't about joking about sex. These, uh, feminists here, this are, woman, presumably there's more than one that believes this, probably a uh, handful of people that believe this. this there's this, uh, and presumably it is a woman uh, who's writing at witchwind.wordpress.com saying that PIV is always rape. Anytime intercourse happens, whether consensual or uh, or not, she's saying it's rape. And we're going to continue the story. You're also welcome to join us here at 855-450-FREE. Maybe you believe this. I don't 
can't imagine anybody does. But if you do actually believe this, we'd love to hear from you. I actually kind of do believe it a little oh, bit. Oh, come on. Really? I'm still I'm still trying to wrap my head around it, but I think there's a kernel of truth in here. You're going to have to tell me based more about on, that. Based on what I said at the end of the last segment. The uh, webcam, by the way, is available for you. Archives, YouTube. Now we've got YouTube archives. You can go to youtube.freetalklive.com to watch the show, the cam version of the show. It's uploaded every single night, presuming something doesn't go wrong with our recording software, which happened on one night. But we still have archives in uh, audio form that go back for years as well. You can grab all of that over at freetalklive.com and enjoy it. And if you like what we're doing on Free Talk Live, please become an amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. We'll take five bucks a month in from you, and then generous contributors will double your five bucks, so it'll become $10. And that money will all be invested into Free Talk Live to get us on more radio stations and do internet advertising. We're doing Google AdWords right now, where we're reaching out to people who are searching for generic things things like talk radio online we want to show them ads about free talk live and get them to click over and listen to our program so they'll encounter the ideas of freedom if you think we're doing something valuable on this program in introducing new people to the ideas of liberty then please get behind the show with the amp program you get perks the amp only call in lines the amp only podcast amp only forum and the brand new amp only facebook group which has been very popular very active probably one of the most active groups that i'm on uh, these days. And I'm, on, I'm in a lot of groups. So, again, you can go to amp.freetalklive.com. We sure appreciate it. Your amp dollars will be doubled for the next several months. So now's a great time to get behind the show and help us out. It makes a big difference when you do it. Amp.freetalklive.com. P-I-V. The author over at uh, witchwind.wordpress.com claims that intercourse is never sex for women. She uh, goes on to claim that whether she thinks she wants it or not, it's the definition of rape, that he will do, he will to do it anyway, and that he uses her and treats her as a receptacle in all circumstances. It makes no difference to him experiencing it as sexual. That is, at the very least, men use women as useful objects and instruments for penetration, and women are dehumanized by this act. Well, it is second. an act of violence. So here's what I don't understand <laughs> is... <clears throat> she's making the claim that women can't do the same thing, apparently. Um, you know, let's say that I, I'm having sex with some woman for simply for the purpose of having sex as opposed to having sex with her. I'm not making love. I'm having sex um, or whatever distinction you want to make. Can't she be doing the same thing? And and if so, am I just a receptacle for her lust? And am I being raped? Because I don't think you are. I mean, like, rape occurs in your mind, not in the author's mind. Well, why not turn it around in a different way, Mark? I mean, using the term receptacle doesn't really make sense when it comes to a man. Uh, but what about the idea that the woman is consuming uh, the man's genitals. I mean, this is uh, she's she's enveloping the the man's genitals, and so therefore showing her domination of the man. I mean, that's kind of a dominant thing to do, right? To to grab a hold of somebody in that way. I guess so. I mean, I, I don't like I don't understand any of this at all. I mean, rape is uh, rape has to do with consenting adults. If it you does. have consenting yes. adults, therefore you don't have rape. And this woman is bat ass crazy. It's ridiculous. I mean, you know, I, I I guess we can talk about what crazy people say, but this is what's going on here. Well, the, the, the argument that, that she's making about how one of them is a rod that goes inside the other person and invades the other person, mm -hmm. that that washes with me, I think, is the, is the right term. It, 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 uh, it, it makes sense to me, yeah. yeah. And I think you'll find that a higher percentage of women like to be bound in some way or like to have their their wrists um held back behind their their back or have their hair pulled then you're going to find men who who like that i have heard and it's not like i've done any deep research on this or anything like that but i've heard that the um that that rape fantasy for women is as common as the two-on-one fantasy is for men i don't know but i wouldn't doubt it that's fine by me um but if you, I mean, that doesn't make it rape. Like the rape fantasy isn't rape. Rape fantasy is a domination fantasy because you could, you know, if at some point or another when the safe word is not used, then, well, is not acknowledged, then you actually have rape. And then that person's not going to like it very much anymore. It's the rare person that likes 
actual rape. I, I cannot remember what the explanation was for the uh, the commonness of the rape fantasy. We had talked about this previously in the past, and there was an interesting, because I'm shocked by it. Like, why would somebody want that? Why, why is that something that is attractive to anybody? And there was a decent explanation for that, and I, I'm spacing out on what that was. No, I don't. I, yeah, so I if you recall, feel free to uh, to sh- sh- share it here at 855 450 free. Jordan is in New York. You're on Free Talk Live. Jordan. Hey, how's it going? Hey, what's on your mind? Um, I just wanted to hit on those uh, two topics that you're talking about the PIV and the PTSD. Yes, sir. Um, first, with the PTSD, um, I mean, seriously, come on. She, she's just an attention holder. You know, um, <laughs> I hate to say it like that, but it's the internet. You know, if you go on the internet, you can easily uh, just as fast get off the internet and turn off your computer and walk away from, you know, Mm -hmm. your computer. I wouldn't disagree that she's a drama queen, um, no doubt about it, but, you know, fine. (laughs) All right. And, um, you know, I I just, I I think she's really just doing that for attention and, um, that that's all it really comes down to is if you really are that offended by something on the internet, turn it you off. Know, turn it off. So, what about your it. thoughts on PIV, Jordan? Um, PIV, I don't even know where to start with these feminists, man. Um, well, no, this is not a common feminist thought. Right. This she's, is a, uh, she's, she's a she, rad film. She's upset at other but, feminists for not being as radical as she is. Yeah, but m- many radical feminists would say this lady's nuts. I mean, this is, at this point, uh, I'm just willing to say that this is either a crazy person or a man trolling. <laughs> <laughs> that is a possibility. I think it was uh, rule 36 on the internet. There's yeah. no rules on the internet. <laughs> Jordan, um, other thoughts? But, um, they're going back to your um, other comment. Uh, I was actually in a psychology psychology class um, that talked about these fantasies and about rape. And um, you know, it's actually really common that women, actually sixty two percent of women, uh, have these fantasies of you know of somewhat of a rape uh, scene. Um, just looking at a real quick statistic here. And why? You know, uh, you know, I, I don't know. That it's just how women are, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right answer, but thank you, Jordan, for the call tonight. Because uh, I wonder if it would, uh, if that would hold true over different cultures. I don't think it's fair to say that's how women are. Uh, there's uh, psychologytoday.com yep, blog site. Up. Why do women have erotic rape fantasies? I don't know if we're going to have enough time to really get into this here. A recent analysis of 20 studies over the last 30 years indicates that between 31% and 57% of women have rape fantasies. These fantasies are frequent or preferred in 9 to 17% of women. Considering that many people are ashamed to report rape fantasies, these stats are likely lowball figures. In my personal experience, most women, this is a man who's writing this, really appreciate subtle to moderate domination in the bedroom, a little forceful restraint, a little pain, as long as they feel safe. I had one girlfriend who wanted wanted me to call her a slut, but that was pushing my boundaries, though I didn't mind calling her naughty, etc., for expressing pleasure at whatever I was doing to her. The whole, you shouldn't like this, but I know you do routine. She explained that sexuality was taboo in her household growing up, so pretending... And she was being corrupted by someone else, freed her to go along with the illicit activities and indulge in her repressed desires. Not all of our play followed this narrative, but when it did, the temperature rose. Research into rape fantasies hasn't been particularly well publicized. Many people don't want to acknowledge that women have them for fear the news will incite or excuse real rape. See, women want it after all. But I follow the Kinsey line that it's better to study the disturbing parts of human sexuality than to keep them in the dark. They, yeah. Uh, been some studies done. They combined 20 of them into a meta-analysis and a whole field of theory to evaluate the eight potential explanations for women's rape fantasies. And we will save those for tomorrow night on Free Talk Live Uh, because there's eight of them here. And it's going to take a while to get through. So stay tuned for that. See you tomorrow at freetalklive.com. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. 
freedomsphoenix.com, constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government, the real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy, health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. Freedomsphoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's Freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The live edition of Peace News Now is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. You're listening to the Liberty Beat, your daily source for liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. This is Justin Armand. And this is Jessica Armand. Here with your Liberty Beat for April 22nd, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,289, silver at $19.41, and Bitcoin is trading at $494. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication for all your print and audio duplication needs. Online at affordablesound.com or give them a call at 512-459-5253. And from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM, June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours at voiceandexit.com. And from The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time at coreymoreshow.com. And now the news. Activists from around the world are concerned about the growing use of smart meter technology. Smart meters are electronic devices used to record the use of electricity and other details about a residence via remote reporting. Citizens in California, Illinois, and Texas have launched campaigns striving to raise awareness about the possible health dangers related to the technology, as well as potential privacy violations. The devices are capable of recording detailed information about appliance usage, as well as the number of people in a home. To learn more about smart meters and how you can get involved, come to Brave New Books on May 10th at 7 p.m. for a screening of Take Back Your Power. Brave New Books is located at 1904 Guadalupe in Austin, Texas. A federal appeals court has overturned a previous ruling that allowed the U.S. Department of Justice to maintain secrecy around its targeted assassination program. The lawsuit was brought forth by the New York Times and other journalists seeking the release of a Justice Department memo dealing with the targeted drone bombing of U.S. citizen Anwar Alawaki and his 16-year-old son. A three-judge panel unanimously ruled that the government no longer had a right to justify secrecy in light of several public officials making statements justifying these killings. On Monday, the Supreme Court rejected ExxonMobil's appeal of a $105 million settlement. The case deals with the contamination of New York City's groundwater with a gasoline additive known as MTBE. ExxonMobil is accused of ignoring warnings from its own scientists and engineers regarding the dangers of using the additive in areas that use groundwater for drinking. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but they do take Bitcoin. 
online at rrbi.co or by phone at 800-874-9760. And from Central Texas Gunworks, home of one of the first Bitcoin ATMs in the country where you can buy and sell Bitcoin. Visit the ATM at 321 West Ben White Boulevard, Suite 203. And from Cabo Bob's, Southwestern Burritos with homemade tortillas. Online at CaboBob's.com. You're listening to The Liberty Beat for April 22nd, 2014. Be sure to check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com. Yahoo News is reporting that President Obama is prepared to grant clemency to those who are jailed for nonviolent drug crimes. According to the unnamed official, the pardon could affect hundreds, if not thousands, of currently incarcerated inmates. The report follows an announcement in January that the Obama administration is working to take the unprecedented step of encouraging defense lawyers to suggest that low-level offenders should be let out of prison early. Obama has been under pressure to make reforms from advocacy groups and family members of people who are serving mandatory minimum drug sentences. However, despite his administration's public support for criminal justice reform, Obama has used his power to grant clemency less frequently than nearly all other U.S. presidents. Today is Earth Day, and timed with the annual commemoration is the kickoff of a five-day Washington, D.C. rally to protest the Keystone XL Pipeline Project. The Cowboy and Indian Alliance comprise